And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Esports Wales Twist channel, where we're going to be kicking off the Valence League Group 2. I hope you guys are all doing well. My name is Mr. Tokisaki, and I'm joined today by none less, none less than Mr. Gizmo. How are you doing today, Gizmo? Yeah, I'm doing well. Ready for these games. I mean, they got delayed by a week, so hopefully yeah. it's been worth the week. <laughs> the wait, all right? I'm really excited I to see how it goes. I'm sure it was worth. I'm sure it was worth the wait because, um, you know, we've actually been able to do some nice uh, prep, I suppose, for this uh, one. Because, of course, last uh, time in the Valence League, um, uh, Team Tan actually got far, right? They got to the finals. Unfortunately, weren't able to make it, but hopefully they can turn it around this time. Yeah, and I mean, I'm hoping that they can make it back to playoffs again this time around. And if we're, if we're able to get that, that finals victory and then make it up to Division 1, that would be insane for this org. Really love to see them compete in that top division with the best of, of the leagues. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think uh, we are still waiting on the players to get into the lobby. We shall be starting. Yep. Uh, I, I'm hoping that it kicks off about seven. Uh, I think that's that's about <laughs> when we're trying to get in here. Either way, we, we got a little bit. We've seen it go haywire sometimes, so uh, can never really promise anything. But obviously, that is what we planned to do. Um, but it all kind of relies on everything coming together nicely, but it does allow us a little bit of time, right, to speak about the teams and about the players. Because obviously we've got Team Tan, most people who are here will know them already. But they are going to be facing Rocket today, Team Rocket. No, it's not um, the Team Rocket from Pokemon, who always seem to lose. Um, it's actually also not Team Rocket, uh, it's Team Rocket. It's a completely different one, but um, what, what do we know about this uh, opponent? Because could this be a tough one? Could this be a walkover? Like, what do we expect to see here? I think I think uh, the only reason it would be tough, uh, it's not nothing against Rocket. I think that because uh, Tan have been playing together so long, I feel like they have that advantage. Uh, I don't really know much about like how long Rocket have been a team together, but uh, I feel like the the only way it's going to be a hard game for Tan is if they if they haven't been able to keep in form from their previous run, because if they haven't been playing together since and all that stuff, this is the first game back. Remember, so they they could be like. It, it, yep. itchy trigger you know trying to go for plays when you shouldn't not not remembering macro and all the rest of it so you know yep. we, we have to get back to that and hopefully we can you know get get some good games i mean and i think that is not necessarily everything because we also have uh, the fact that it's a different meta right like and most of the time some players favor loads uh, different metas than others and a meta change could mean that some players just don't really feel as comfortable with the champions that are being picked currently or maybe have to go off meta to just stay in a comfort zone. All kinds of things that we are going to be seeing. Um, but I think one of the matchups that I want to specifically talk about today is going to be that mid lane. Because not only, obviously, is Team Tan a team that likes to play around the mid lane, but the champions, Gizmo, of both these players, Harry... Um, uh, I forgot that. Yeah, the, the other one we're going to be watching. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, but it's fine, but it's going to be... Shopper. It's going to be... There we go. There's the one. But it's going to be close because this could be... There's a few picks here. We see the Lissandra. We see the LeBlanc. They could be very much wanted by both teams here. Yeah, I, I wonder which side people are willing to take of that matchup because, you know, everyone says Lissandra counters LeBlanc all the time, right? And we see it in many different regions, yeah. but this is an amateur tournament. So as much as counters do make a difference to a certain extent, it, it, it then falls away from, from it, right? And... The yep. LeBlanc, as, as much as it, it, it does get countered by Lissandra, we have seen it also just completely destroy Lissandra's if they get the wrong, if oh, they yeah. get the right combo and Lissandra messes up that W with the Aftershock. So uh, I'm really excited to see this mid lane, see if they, if they those picks make it through. If not, we know Harry has has a, a pretty big uh, champion pool for him to dive into, and I'm sure he'll be getting jungle help even, even in the worst of matchups to help him out in that lane. I imagine so, for sure. And it, it makes me kind of think, like, what are we going to expect from the draft, right? Because we know that mid lane is going to be very you know, wanted by both players, these champions. So are they going to like early pick a mid laner? Because that is what we tend to not see. Uh, we've seen it a little bit more nowadays in the LEC, LCS, uh, that the mid laners and the top players are being picked earlier rather than later. Whereas last season, of course, we mostly saw the bot laners and the junglers being picked immediately. And then obviously them looking for a counter pick in the top or the mid lane. Uh, are we going to expect the mid lane to be just straight up first picks and get it out there just to make sure that you've got a champion that you want or do we expect them to look for a counter pick here you reckon i think tan should look for the counter pick i think harry has has the pool and the mechanics to pull off a counter pick if he wanted to um and i think that they have enough uh picks in other roles that they need to prioritize over them i, I think mars needs to, needs to prioritize his leona or his engaged champs in general uh in that support role because a, uh, we all know god god level support can just run a game like this oh yeah 
uh, especially if they can pair up with that jungler. And I, I am expecting Celine to be able to get like maybe his Zin, uh, his J4, or something with a bit of aggression to like go deeper into those jungles and find the right places for him to go for those engages, right? Uh, yeah. Overall, I mean, I, I, we could also just see the arcane buff come through and we just see a Jinx in the bot lane <laughs> out of nowhere. Okay, just completely run over this game. And, and that is a pick which we're seeing across all regions at the moment. Sort of feeling uncounterable to a certain extent. I know that uh, we've had discussions with people from the uh, NL oh, yeah. NLC talking about this, and it pretty much has like a is it 20, it's only lost what a seventy five percent win rate. Jinx now in, in that it's, league, it's high, and because like it's also games. played a lot, right? It's crazy. Yeah, 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 it's it's insane. And I think that was the oh, it was a really interesting talk. Um, in fact, I kind of want to have this talk uh, anyway, but like. We won't have that much time to like <laughs> speak all about this these matchups, of course. But it's true, Jinx has been rising up completely uh, after you know the Arcane release because everyone hecking loves Arcane, right? That's why. Um, <laughs> That's but I do think, I had to, come on, like you have to do it at that point, right? And I saw it in the chat as well, so I had no choice. Um, but I think uh, what's most important about the Jinx popping off uh, nowadays is the fact that the lanes uh, that she is against do not play as aggressively as they probably should. Um, as we said, right, this is the talk that we kind of had, uh, had with the uh, people from the NLC, like Nymera, of course, we had Middlecott as well. And uh, we kind of realized that, yes, we see Caitlyn picks, yes, we see Jin picks, which tend to work really well into the Jinx, but then the lanes just kind of just go even and they both play it safe because... I feel like in pro play, the aggression is just not necessarily there to really punish that Jinx. If we see the pick here, I do hope that um, there's going to be aggression on the opposite side so that they can actually deal with her early game so that she has no time to come back. Yeah, and, and it's, it's the aggression with the, with the new changes to the TP as well that are coming in, right? Yeah. You won't be able to, to TP down for the dive if you're a top laner uh, aggressively. You have to do it reactionary. Uh, so you can only read the fend dives. You can't join a dive if, if you're trying to dive the enemy team, right? Yep. Which makes it very hard. Um, and it make, this makes it so much harder to punish these champs. Especially in lane. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is, is that Caitlyn... We, we are seeing Caitlyn used as, as, as the, the punishing pick across the board. Everyone recommends Caitlyn or Jin, right? Caitlyn, yep. to, to, to win... To feel like you've won the matchup, you have to get the whole tower, five plates, and a 20 CS lead. And even then, you go go into mid-game, and if Jinx gets one kill, just, just one little kill, it just runs You really over. don't like Caitlyn, do you? <laughs> Kait Caitlyn and Siva, get them out of my games. Just just ban them. Get those players off of my screens, okay? <laughs> That's all I need, okay? But yeah, so we're hoping... Hope, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing a Caitlyn, just to see them get run over by a Jinx, but yeah... Uh, Overall, I, I think that we, we might see the Jinx buff come through. If not, we know Zandia likes to go to his Callista, his um, uh, Zaya, uh, even the MF pick, which uh, he, he does play a lot with Mars, especially when they go for those combos like the, the Amumu last season and stuff. So, yeah, this will yep. be interesting to go forward. So, hopefully this goes well. And that's really interesting that you mentioned that because Callista, MF, I mean, when have we seen those champions ever like nowadays? We don't, really don't see those anymore. MF used to be kind of good in the last uh, season, but has kind of just fallen out of the meta, probably because of the fact that just too many people running around. Your ultimate is not that strong anymore. And that build, of course, um, with the, um, the lethality, it's just not as good as it used to be. Um, so, yeah, maybe we'll see that come out. It would probably... I'd say, um, you know, put Rocket off guard, perhaps, because Callista is one of those champions, right? Like, you you tend to think she's really bad, and you, you can just counter her with literally slowing her, but I feel like a good Callista player can absolutely run over the lane. Yeah, but you just play NASA support or uh, Zillion yep. <laughs> and just completely oh, just, just ruin her day. Uh, but I, I would like to, see, to, like to see this, because these are picks that we know that they like to play, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if you are proficient on these champions, you can make them work. I mean, if you're good enough on a champion, you can make it work in any elo in any lane. And I know people are going to be saying, Yumi top, but I swear there's a meta for it somewhere. Okay, you just have to do funnel. Okay, I'm sure it will work. I mean, we're seeing Janna top with Smite. Uh, is it Smite Ignite? Smite TP. Either way, you know, we're seeing some crazy stuff here, especially with the changes to objective bounties and how that works you know now pike is a bit more useless because you get the gold which then means that the other yeah. team gets objective bounties but it's, such it's a crazy big, it's such a big uh preseason change that happened so late on now that we, we we have to adjust to this and this is their first game back in a competitive setting and thank god chemtech drake is gone but we still have some oh, spicy god. stuff to come i mean 
I'm excited. There's plenty. I mean, we've seen a new champion as well, right? That looks spicy as well. It looks like to be a bit of Chemtech Soul uh, in her kit as well. So that is something that we're not going to be seeing just yet. Of course, it looks like the teams are almost ready to get us into the draft. Um, so uh, we'll soon get ourselves into there. And let's speak a little bit more about the draft um, because we talked about, of course, uh, where we're, whether we're going to be seeing a potential early mid pick. Um, but you also know, mentioned the Jinx, right? The AD carries that have been rising in popularity because of we all hacking Love Arcane. I shouldn't have done it twice, my bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> but of course, there's still stuff like the Hecarim, the Jin Zhao, right? We still have the, um, the junglers uh, left open that are incredibly strong still in this meta. I feel like junglers tend to be the first picks normally, um, especially with the power that the, the Jin Zhao and the Hecarim, of course, have nowadays. Um, are we going to see that? Because like, to me, I think, logically, you'd still see a jungle first pick or perhaps um, a support. Both these players uh, like to play engaged supports. Um, so we could maybe see some, you know, fumbling over there. But what do we expect to see here? Do we expect the, the Hecarim first pick or the bans, of course? Could there be a Hecarim ban? Could it be a Xin Xiao ban? Or maybe take away the, Les, the Blanc and the Lissandra? What, yeah. what are we going to see here? I, I got to say, I think I think you've got to get rid of that Hecarim. I mean, he's been terrorizing solo queue so much yeah. across across everything. You've got the Chemtech build with the mana immune, uh, uh, like, and then you get the more mana, and then all of a sudden it just becomes one shot uh, if if you have hands, right? So it becomes a really scary thing uh, that can always get onto your backline, especially if you do want to play these these low mobility uh, AD carries. They're not going to get a chance to play the game if you leave that open. Uh, I will say Xin Zhao and J J4, they have been a staple pick of um, and for a while, but they've also been a staple pick across the board for a while, and they're probably the longest running junglers I've I've seen since I started playing the game. They've just stayed, you know, they're not completely meta, but they've been in the meta, like, you're able to play them inside the meta. Uh, as we switch over on into draft here, here we go. There, that smooth transitions, smooth transitions. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> We've seen the Shen Ban getting, getting uh, taken away. Obviously, it makes sense. Uh, with, with the inability to TP down to bot lane anymore, Shen has like risen in priority, especially in pure play. So taking that mm -hmm. one off the board makes full sense. But, ooh, Corky. Do I, have any views I like the Corky, Corky band, all right. I mean, Corky is just... I'm just going to put it out there. Corky is absolutely ridiculous right now. Um, obviously, incredibly strong in that mid lane, though. The next ban is actually something that is more interesting. It is the Lissandra ban, which um, I feel like puts a lot of pressure on whether they want to leave LeBlanc open or not. The Xin Xiao is going to be the next ban. So they kind of have to make a choice here, right? Do they ban LeBlanc or do they potentially, um, you know, let, uh, let uh, Team Tan pick it first? And well, it's open. I, I think it's fine. I think if, if they are able to get this LeBlanc, it, it's fine for them. Yeah. But if, if Rocket take it away from them, it could be in a world, world of pain here because... LeBlanc is just one of those most annoying champions that can just dash in, do, do her rotation, just go back and just wait for another another reset. Oh, looks like we're going to see the uh, first first round of the Arcane buff. Oh, uh, instant let's lock go. In of, <laughs> of the powder. Just get, just, just, just enjoy it. I know that you're you're a fan of the powder. Of course. I mean, Massive that's that phrasing is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah. If you if you think about it in a different way, then that could be problematic. Um, I hope the FBI won't knock at my door. Um, but. Uh, true, I do love powder, and I'm already excited to talk about. God, don't laugh. That's gonna make it sorry, worse. Sorry, sorry. Um, well, and we see. I was gonna the... say, I love to see what's gonna be picked against it, and we see um, the Jarvan is a very logical pick to me personally. Of course, we talked about how it's rising in popularity, but the MF is something, as we said, we haven't seen in a lot, and we kind of expected Zanya to pick something that was out of meta. Yeah, and I quite like the MF pick with the J4. The J4 alt being able to yeah. lock someone down into into it. Uh, I wonder if it will be paired with the Galio. I do like Galio support at the moment. Uh, I've been playing it quite a lot, and I feel like it's it's very good at locking down and is insanely tanky at the moment. Looks like we are going to see a Braum picked up here. That is a heavy counter to the MF, just being able to put up that shield with the right timing just to block all of the damage, as well as being probably one of the strongest um, bot lane supports that's just never played. Just countered everything. As soon as you try to make a play on it, she, she just goes, you know what? You're just stunned, you're stunned, and I just walk out, or I just throw an ulti down and you're knocked up. So yeah. it's, a, it's a bit more of a scary pick, oh. and the Hecarim get through. Oh, it's this is a, already looking like a powerful draft here from Team Tan, because, yeah, the Hecarim, huge jungler. We talked about it, how strong it is nowadays, and, of course, yeah, I feel like the Brom adds a lot of uh, power there, and it's also as well, with powder in the bot lane. Okay, I should probably start saying Jinx here. Uh, but with with, the, with Jinx in the bot lane as well, with the attack speed buff that you get on your Q, obviously, you will be able to proc um, that uh, 
the, the passive more uh, quick. So that's going to be looking good as well. As we see the victor being the third pick here by Team Rockat. Um, another one of those mid laners, right? Super in meta, super strong. Just has to get a little bit to the late game, but seems to be fine in most lanes. Yeah, and I think it's going to be... It should be unpunished here because they do have the bands to be able to throw to the mid lane now. So I think that he's going to be able to get away with this. Uh, I wonder if we will see it countered with a mid lane chase just because I think it's funny uh, if it did. Um, I mean, you'd have to expect a LeBlanc ban here, right? Uh, surely. Surely it's going to be the LeBlanc ban. It has ban. to be. But uh, Yeah. Yeah, it, it has to be. Uh, sure, please. Okay, they're banning. I'm just <laughs> going to wait for it because I can't think yeah, of anything else. There, there it go. is. Yeah, okay, okay. it makes a lot of sense. Okay, we put four bands towards the mid lane. It's completely fine. Went towards the jungle and they picked the Gwen over the Hecarim. I mean, untargetable versus uh, unstoppable. Which one do you pick? I mean... I think I'd rather deal with the Gwen jungle myself, but it's up to you guys. Uh, but so far, I mean, it is surprising not to see the support locked in for Team Tan here. They are banning out the Leona, so might as well have to probably go towards a different engaged champ I'm expecting. Maybe the Amumu. I know it's fallen out of meta a bit, but he yep. did play it a lot last season. Or even the Alistair. Alistair can play sort of, okay. like, not great in the brawl, but like, you can just do some stuff if you wanted to into it. Yeah. And like you have the ulti to take off the stun if it when it lands and it's not there great, it but it, it could work. Have to do something. And yeah, I think that Leona band was just super smart, right? Because it's only it's not only just fine into Brom, it's also really good into Jinx, because Jinx has no means of escaping. Oh. So once you hit that, wow. We see the Annie. I was gonna talk about the mid lane. We might see a seraphine coming out from line of five, but no. Annie hover it right now. Let's not talk about it too much until it is actually locked in. This could just be a bait and they could end up switching it around. Just... Um, yeah, so it is going to be uh, looking like the Mordekaiser for now uh, uh, sent towards the top lane. Pretty decent blind, blind pick here, right? Yeah, but I thought I thought we were going to see like a crying game, you know, just, just the <laughs> Annie mid to just really show it. But yeah, Mord, that, that suggests to me that they're going to try and prioritize an AD mid. But then again, the really is a... banned. Yeah, when you have the Jinx, though, do you, do you need more AD with the Hecarim? Maybe not, so you can try and go a bit AP heavy here. Oh. Oh, 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 now this is super interesting to me because Ari has gained a plethora of buffs. And I've heard people say that she was really strong. I've heard people say that it was okay. If this is getting picked, I was going to say I was going to go absolutely crazy. Um, was just a little bit of a hover. But Ari, very, very uh, strong oh, Timo, potentially Timo, lock it right in. now. Lock it, lock it in. Just okay, lock it in. okay. Go back to the rhythm, please, because this is <laughs> this is this is not something that we want to see. I don't even know if it's that good into Mordecai's. I don't think it is. Oh. Fiora, on the other hand, will definitely be able to uh, do well in that one v one. Yeah, and I mean we we've got the uh, the Ari pick. I, I have the buffs actually hit live servers yet. I don't know, don't know if they have. I thought thought they were coming out this. I knew they were coming out this patch, but I thought. I mean, there was an update, so Did I they come out this think moment? they have. I think they might have, yeah, because like when well when I started the league at least, I don't know about you guys. If anyone in the chat can tell us this, please let us know. Um, but I do I had that's... an update when I started the league, so I think they might be out. Well that's gotta be I hope so for T Bro. <laughs> that's gotta be a, a uh, nine oh five's um... first time playing it on it, unless they've been practicing on the P the mm. uh PBE. PBE? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It just completely lost it. <laughs> okay. That's I was okay. Like, I was like trying to trying to, you know. But yeah, either way, I mean it, it, there is some massive changes to Ari, and you know the ulti resets and all the rest of it is gonna make it very hard to lock down this champion. But I still feel like Victor is just so low mo no, low mobility, has so much damage in his kit at the moment that he just like if he just scales too lame, it's gonna be hard into an Ari. But you just just take that time to scale, just get to a couple items. You could just one shot the Ari. Like Ari dashes in, oh you just press R, bye bye. You know like it's gonna be pretty hard for them to play. It is definitely going to be hard for them to play. And kind of brings us to think, like, what composition right here do we feel like, you know, looks the strongest? Because I feel like both compositions have a good amount of scaling. Because even Mordecai's, of course, skills well, but so does Fiora. You have the Victor who, I yes, I know about the Ari buffs, but I don't know if that means she suddenly became a great scaler. I don't think you're going to outscale Victor. Uh, but they do have the Jinx on the side, right? And Jinx, as we talked about it already, is an incredible scaler, uh, especially if she gets through that laning phase without too many problems. And even if she is uh, weak, a kill can still make her very useful in team fights despite doing very little damage. But I feel like we also then have to talk about if she gets shut down, the tankiness on the side of Team Rocker, uh, sorry, Team uh, Team Tan is is huge, right? It's massive because if this Jinx doesn't really get ahead, how are they going to be burning through that back uh, front line? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just looking forward to this top lane matchup, the Fiora versus the Mordekaiser. Uh, I think Tan sort of have, have the edge here with the Fiora matchup because you're able to, mm. to land, you know, the repost into the stun a lot easier on the Mordekaiser. And if the Mordekaiser gets greedy and just goes for the straight up R onto her and she just reposts it, your, your ultimate's pretty much gone. And you just waste yep. a lot of stuff. And we all know that, that, that Tan loves to play this Fiora, the side lane splitter. And they just they just use that pressure so well when it's that when it's it's available. So it could be scary, but a long time uh, ten view well back then it was Yar uh, viewers know <laughs> that it was there was that one game where it did get to about thirty five minutes ten k gold advantage towards them, and then the one Jinx got got all the shutdowns on the Nexus, and they just lost the game from that point. So oh. you have to be scared of this Jinx going into this game because we've seen what what's happened to them before with it. And you can't give a Jinx time to scale. Three item Jinx is the scariest thing at the moment in this game, I'd say. That or a Diana jumping in your face, but one or the other. There's plenty of yeah, scary things in that way. And I think it's true. And I do feel like, though, with the composition that they have, uh, it should be relatively easy to shut down a Jinx, right? Jarvan is Im immaculate at diving. MF has a lot of damage early game. And Alistar, I mean... You cannot really miss the knockup. It's possible. You can definitely screw it up, but I don't think uh, you should have many problems with that. Now there is Braum, who I think is pretty good defensively, but I like obviously blocking the damage uh, coming in from the misfortune is great against the ultimate if he gets the unbreakable at the right time. Um, but I do feel like Team Rocket should have a decent uh, time being able to shut down the Jinx. So I'm very interested to see how Team Tan is going to play around it because they tend to not actually play around this bot lane much, right? They tend to be uh, sending the support um, out to roam. Though I feel like in this particular case, we might see a bit less of that. Yeah, I mean, Braum quite hard to roam on, uh, especially I don't think it pairs very well with the with the Hecarim yeah. to be able to get those roams off. Obviously, Hecarim preferring to spam his... Uh, Q over the other text, which I don't think stack the Braum passive. So that's going to be a bit, bit of a problem for their rooms. But then again, you have a Jinx, so you, maybe you just want to sit, stick in lane, but that will unlock this Alistair just to go around the map. So it does seem like we're going to have an MF weak side again. Uh, I would like to say that I'm hoping it's a crit MF. Uh, we are loading together yep. now, so we can see rooms, but uh, obviously Precision. you guys can't. So we are seeing the press <laughs> the attack, which is, is, is good for good, right? Because the lethality build is, is usually focused towards getting the great ultimates off in these team fights, right? And into a Braum, <laughs> into a Hecarim, I don't think you're going to have a chance to get those ultimates off. So I feel like this is this is the best option for them. Uh, have you got black screen when you're in? Or is... Yep, I think so. So I think we have to leave and go back. <laughs> no, I think, it's, I think it's just an early pause. I think I think that's all it is. Oh. But, uh, it could, yeah, well... could just be. We, we, we queue in faster because we're a spectator. But... Yeah, so we'll still just keep talking about matchups whilst we're waiting. Uh, we are seeing the airy yeah. mid laner for for the victor here. Uh, I do like this. I think it is mm. a very good pick here. Um, it does allow you to get those those auto attacks off in lane to poke out very fast and all the abilities so you can get fast rotations around. But then you won't have the burst ability that you would have with such stuff. Some stuff like the elect queue. Uh, is it still? Um... I think we might have to uh, reset because I've had this before, and if I reset, it works. So. Yeah, just it putting out, we, yeah, I'll, I'll just spectate by by clicking on your um, yeah. account, obviously, yeah. Technical difficulties, I mean, this is actually not technical difficulty. This is literally Riot being great. Um, so let me uh, get the spectate oh. going here as well. I cannot spectate. I will transition that back to that. Possibly looking at my friends list. <laughs> uh, I cannot spectate via you. Okay, well. Somehow. Well, oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I'm in. Um... Right, uh, you might have to screen share to me then, uh, which means, yeah, guys, we're gonna have a little bit of delay on the um, uh, on the PVP. Uh, this is just uh, Riot being great once again. Uh, hey, let me see. It, I... It'll be fixed for for the second round. Uh, it sucks, but yeah, hopefully, this is just the way it's gonna have to be, I guess. Um, uh, yep. You guys can't see yet, but I will transition us back into game now. Um, it's black screen. <laughs> for a second there we go okay i think we're good right stuff is happening um yes let's go right yep a bit of a scuffy here by riot games but either way we are getting ourselves into this game it's going to be team tan versus team rocket here in the valance league let's see which team is going to get themselves into a flying start here right now we do see we're going to just get a very straightforward five pointer defense here no team looking to do anything crazy at the start of the tournament yeah, and why would you, you know? Coin flip a whole game on an invade, it's not solo queue. Uh, it is very fun to do. 
looks like we're just getting a ward down on those raptors, just being able to time everything. It's a very good good idea because we, we have a... I mean, it, it's pretty common for a Hecarim to start on this red. Or he can just start on his chickens if he wanted to. It looks like they're going to scan it out, so they will get XP. If Ari gets this, she's going to get level 2 off the first wave, which could be scary for the victor. I think that could be really important, especially with a champion like Ari, right? Because if you get that charm level 2, you already see the electric coming out doing some decent damage. It, it could be very big. Um, but most importantly, both junglers are starting on the same side, both looking towards, uh, passing towards that top side, which means we might see an early skirmish coming out there. Yeah, and I mean, one of them's going to lose, but you know, Dark Cups aren't as important anymore, so yes, it'd be nice to see. I think, uh, I believe Hecarim should win that matchup, but it is the phase rush versus the burst of this uh, J4. Depends on who's going to get there first. Hecarim is skipping camps to be able to try and get to that bot side faster, whereas J4 is clearing everything on his way, just doing a standard full clear. Yeah, means Hecarim is going to be faster towards that top lane if that is going to be their uh, the side ganking area. Um, it's super, super oh, bad quality, so bear with me. But Alistar going here for an engage. It gets locked up, though, by the Bromstar. But a lot of damage going on on Boogly. Looking to just get out with the Flash. But that's a very strong start here from the bot side. Yeah, and that's why we don't let Alistar get a level 2 for free. I mean, Alistar's probably the worst champion level 1 compared to the best Brom. And you just didn't didn't pressure him at all. You just let him walk up for that level 2. Could have stunned him very fast. But the other way, you burn the Flash of the Brom there very early on. Now, as the Alistair, you're able to play around this bush and just go for aggression. I've seen a fight in the top lane. Yeah, early gang. But the repost being taken second, very smartly done by Zephyr there, just to make it out there. So, yeah, we saw the early gang coming in from the Hecarim, but uh, not really getting to anything good, which means he's just going to go back towards his blue. But it does give, of course, uh, Selene the information uh, to perhaps look for a gang of himself. Yeah, and I mean, with the Wolf's wave now pushed out in a position... Uh, Really uncomfortable for him. J4 can come around for an easy gank. Uh, it is slightly warded, but for, for the most part, you should be able to get it because he is so overextended. So if then he's looking, he can go for it after this. That super just didn't spot him out. So if you was able to keep him on the outside of this, just keep in the danger zone, the freeze, it should be just a, a quick drive by for, for the J4. Mm. Yeah, we say that, but he is looking to back right now. Quite interesting choice there because, yeah, as you said, right, getting that Fiora ahead as well would be very, very big. But I guess just looking for a full clear, looking for a back, trying to get ahead in CS of this uh, Hecarim and maybe try and out jungle him that way. So no gank coming in there. We do see a bit of a roam coming in here from Zandiar and uh, Mars, of course, trying to get some wars over into the dragon area and making sure that maybe they can go for that first dragon in a minute. Yeah, they took the skull of crap, but I feel like that's just destroyed j Paul's attempt because he, he's now down there with no camps up, looking for that skull of crab, and now he has to go fishing for a for a farm, he reset top lane, I think, just to try and get that Scuttle Crab bot lane. And now he has no camps. He has to go back and wait for his Gromp to reset so he can go back and get that. Yeah, uh, interesting choice here. I'm, I'm pretty sure... I would imagine this has gone through uh, the communications. But we did talk about how it is very important to get that Jinx behind in this lane. So perhaps they're trying to put extra money on Zandia here now. who's doing a lot of damage uh, there to Boogly. But just going to be able to walk out safely. So... We'll see. Perhaps it is just to get them ahead, and maybe it'll work, right? If they can shut down Wellsy on his Jinx, it would be very, very good here for Team Town. Yeah, and with this uh, wave stuck in the top side, I wonder if J4 is going to make his way up to move, move to this. I mean, Alsa is unlocked as well around the map. Looks like he's going to play for this mid lane, but Victor is resetting, so... Would it be nice to see them play around this double side wave in this top side, just to be able to punish this Mordekaiser, but not dealing with the wave management? And maybe get this Fuhrer, um an early kill again, but it looks like she's just going to take the free reset and pick it, but looks like it's just going to stay with the wave where it is. Alistair and J4 are walking around, maybe going to support towards this bot side and see this Jinx alone farming. Yeah, it could be a potential dive that we might see here. The support is not there yet, but yeah, perhaps they're just looking to set up for the dragon here. I do think they want to look for a kill before they want to go to the dragon, so we'll see. If that is going to happen, Wellesley still though in a pretty safe um, position here, but the wave is building up and pushing their way. Well, I might as well go around. That's a good knockup coming in there. Wellesley in trouble, has already used the flash. A lot of damage taken there by the Javan, and the support is also taking a lot of damage, but they are not dying yet. That means they might be able to get out, but here it comes. The Hecarim comes in to do the counter gag. It's doing a lot of damage back to them. First blood goes over to Zandia though. Can they find more? That is the Hecarim getting the kill. That's going to be two kills. This gets hyper, that surely has to be the triple kill, but the push away from Hecarim actually saves Mars here. But it is still not a good play here for Team Tan. 
Yeah, miscommunication there. The, the Alistair going on onto the support, the J4 going onto the Jinx, really miscommunicating there, and, and then overcommitting into a Hecarim counter gank. Chase down potential. Luckily, Mars gets away with the skin of his teeth on, on the back end, but it's going to be risky, and now we're seeing Harry just getting attacked by this Hecarim. Yeah, Harry could be in trouble here. Might have to use that flash, taking a lot of damage here from the Hecarim. Still is a flash, the Kale's still doing some damage back, but does flash eventually to get away, and this should mean a free Drake here for Rocket. Yeah, is Hecarim too low though? We are seeing an aggressive play here with Slinny. Oh, yeah, Jarvan going in with the EQ combo. There's another knockup coming out. Ari has to use the ultimate to try and get away. The traps have been put down, which means that Team Tank cannot follow though. 9 on 5, looking for a little bit more then. Uh, not going to find anything though. Very skirmish heavy game so far as in the top lane. Speaking of a skirmish, we have one right now. The ultimate has been put down. Zephyr is trying to heal with his own, but is, does he have enough damage to try and take down Simon? It is inside the minions of Zephyr right now, but Simon just has too much health and they will both end up walking away as the dragon is going to be started finally. Yeah, and I mean, Zephyr, Zandia can't even really walk up to this wave bot side. I mean, he's gonna, gonna attempt it here, but you have no vision. You have, you're playing weak side here, and they've really choked out the vision, and that bot jungle isn't yours anymore. So he's trying to get anything back up from the top side, but with, with Zephyr going down as well, I, it's just, like, not, he didn't go down, but losing every, like, not being there means that he really can't go for much at this point. Maybe he will be able to on this wave if Simon overextends, but. With Zephyr having no ultimate and, and Slinny having no ultimate, I don't know if they can lock down this Mordekai in this top side. Yeah, and we have to talk about the Bramble Fest as well, right? The perfect buy always against the Fiora this early on. And you just saw that, how much damage he negated by doing that. Now Zephyr though, going in for the engage. Taking a lot of damage back though, but Slinny is here. Can they find the engage? The knockup is not going to be there. Simon taking a lot of damage, but look at the damage that he does back to Zephyr. Keeps the flash very well done, but they might look for a, uh, for a three-man dive into the Herald here because... So far, it is Rocket in the lead, and now though, Harry looking for a kill here on 9 of 5, force this the flash, so well done there in the mid lane. Yeah, good attempt to force the flash, shame that the top left play didn't go quite in their favour, they are going to rotate this into the Herald, they are lucky that they didn't attempt to dive onto this MF in the bot side, I think they would have been able to, they had a double sec minion wave up there. Uh, MF did just pop, pop up into level 6, so she did have access to the ultimate, but with Braum having the shield, he could have just blocked it all, and then just shredded her into tower so sort of lucky that there was a misplay there from Rocket. but either way i mean they're getting the herald but they, they did lose a lot of time on this top side yeah yeah they, they certainly did and uh, you know oh, <laughs> i like to do that as well you see the super mega dev rocket coming by unfortunately your name is not tokisaki so you're not getting that right now okay i'll, I'll stop um little plug it's fine, it's fine. You go there yeah you know it's okay but <laughs> Uh, but yeah, unfortunately it's working out, but yes, it's um, it's very smartly done, right, by the side of Team Tan to put their pressure into that top side, get themselves a Herald, and this can allow them to get plates. Now, here's the question, right, where do you want to put it? Because I feel like every lane is very plausible here, uh, but right now the best, the lane that seems to be doing the best is definitely Harry here in the mid lane. Yeah, I would put it on the Victor. We, we all know what Victor can do with items. It's literally just about getting to those. He, he has AoE abilities, so easy to hit. I mean, it's just worth investing into that champion because he's just so so broken at this point that you might as well just give it to him. And he's been playing it pretty pretty well, as we say. With well, Caster speaking Curse. of playing it pretty well, yeah, the Caster Curse is right there. Harry cannot go anywhere, has no flash. That's a kill for the Ari. Oh, Gizmo, what are you doing, buddy? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my friend. Um, but you know, I mean, I still think he's the best to invest it in. Maybe it's worth <laughs> a bit less now, but looks like they're going for this bot side play. Yeah, this is going to be a 3v2 here. There comes the exhaust. Wellsy in a lot of trouble. Absolutely nowhere to go. Zandia picks that one up. And now it is going to be Bugly, Bugly in trouble here. Pretty much has nowhere to go, but has a Hecarim to back him up. This could potentially become a 3v3. The flash comes in there. The knockup there from Mars. Pushes him right back into the boost. The knockup is there. There it goes. The Cataclysm. Massive damage, but it's the support who picks it up. But either way, two kills for Team Town. It was a great play by Mars there just to be able to get, get the, the Hecarim seeing that he was out of position. In, in the wrong jungle, uh, might I add. A great flash there, but just a shame that he was able to pick up the kill. I mean, once you do a play like that, you're like, it, it's it's so good, I deserve the kill, you know? So, little props there for the support player. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're a support man yourself, right? You, I know you like taking the kills. I've played with you plenty of times, so um, especially when you're on that brand. Uh, I don't know how good it is on an Alistar. Get your tanky, but now, on, once again, Wellsy in trouble. Has no flash. The heal, though, it's just going to be enough we'll to save him. And this is exactly, though, what we wanted to see on the Jinx. However, now there could be trouble. There goes the Herald. So it is going to be um, funneled into Zandia. Wellsy looking for some poke here. The Hecarim is going to be pushed away. 
And it looks like they're going to be able to walk away safely. But it does mean Zandia actually does not get any plates. As now, here comes the knockup. It's a three-man knockup. It's big, but he gets instantly chomped. So then he has to fast. As now, that's another three-man knockup. The damage they certainly do. Exactly. Zandia gets one, but the Jinx is excited. Gets two big kills here coming out from Mills Fortune. And Team Tan win out. I can't believe that play went in the favor of uh, Team Team Tan. I mean, I thought that was uh, Brokat all the way there. I mean, just the overextension though from the Hecarim just trying to force something that wasn't going to be going to happen. I thought because they had the earlier roam by the Ari, they could actually make something of it. But great knockup oh. there. Here comes the Ari. The flash is early. Sandia does get charmed. That should be an easy kill. Another one goes on to the Jinx, and this is exactly what Team Tan would have to try and avoid her uh, Gizmo. Yeah, 750 over for a Jinx. I mean, that's going to be scary. I mean, she can use all of that money. It just, I mean, it's the perfect person to put the money onto. Literally a hyper carry, okay? Giving her over that money is is insane. And, I mean, she could push for the plate in here, but take, take in some judgment of not knowing where the jungler is to take this reset here. But either way, that Jinx is going to look even scary. Now, I'd say that she might even return here with a Kraken Slayer of her own. But yeah, Kraken Slayer could of course be uh oh not gonna be the Kraken Slayer she said could also could be the uh, Gale Force coming out. I do feel against that comp you're gonna need the Kraken Slayer as we see a support fight over here. Bonk pushes him away, but I don't think that Mars is gonna be able to get that pink one. It's gonna be Bugly winning that one out. Uh, we might actually see a fight coming out for the Skull Crab and the Dragon coming out. There is the um, Smite. Uh, for Team Tan, so they do get themselves the Skull Crab, which will allow them a bit more pressure over this dragon that they can potentially fight over. Yeah, I'm, I'm, to be fair, we are seeing slower dragon takes this this time round. Yeah, I mean, I, I, normally you'd be you'd be on third Drake by now, uh, or, or, or approaching it, right? So it, it is going a bit slower, but we are seeing uh -huh. Hecarim just completely just. He's saying yeah. that this bot side jungle's not yours anymore, J4. It's it's all mine. So he's done this a few times. I mean, props to him playing like this. Yeah, Shaper playing very aggressively in the jungle. I like to see it. Lots of damage coming in onto Howie. Chunking him out before the dragon. That could be big. And in fact, now could be Slinny called out. But yeah, here is the Alistar. That's a double knockup. The Mega Death Rocket comes out. Doesn't do too much damage right now. But is it going to be enough to help them out? Slinny is trying to get out. This could be potential dive. But the Hecarim has to walk away for now. It is very close between these two teams. Oh, the Chaos no. doing some damage. But there is the burst. 905 gets himself the kill. And the dragon once again looking good here for Team Rocket. The perfect threaded charm through there, just to be able to hit Slinny in the backside. That just opens up the free Drake here. I mean, it was pretty free anyway with the poke that they sustained, but either way, that was perfect. Just able to. It must be pixel perfect right there, just to be able to hit that. If not a bug, and it went through, through the Alistair, but either way, insanely well played there, able to pick up that kill, rotate that into the Drake. And now, it is a Manfin Sword that we're coming up here, so. If they're two, two drakes towards that soul point, and that could be very scary on their team, especially when you're talking about having this Jinx hyper carry at the backside, getting an extra big shield now. Yeah, looking very, very good. And I, I kind of want to talk about the performance a little bit because Wellesley, you know, performing quite well has been, uh, you know, focused a little bit in that bot lane. Perhaps not as much as we would have uh, hoped to see from Team Tan, but still managed to survive most of these gangs. Got the Kraken Slayer 3 and 1 right now. And look at the gold, 5.7 thousand, looking very strong. But also 905 in the mid lane. But has been have, uh, having a troublesome time, to say the least, of course, against Harry in lane. But hey, those charms have been on point. Yeah, and he's just roamed. Like, he, when he's roamed, he's been able to get these kills, pick him up, and he's been able to use that gold to be able to keep himself in the game. I think he's actually... Uh, sorry, I just hit the gold again. Uh, yeah, he is actually just ahead of Victor. Just about, as we've seen in game. Oh, know, the flash knockup comes in on Bugly and looking in a bit of trouble. The traps are there to lock them back up. The bullet time not doing enough damage at this point in the game. So now, Wellsy, though, looking a bit aggressive here, but potentially looking for Ooh. some kills here. The damage is a lot, but it hasn't been... Yeah, Death Rocket that comes in. Ooh. Lots of damage. It's a killing spree. Wellsy now could be looking for another one because Harry's in trouble right here. The CC chain is there. Wellsy's not taking any damage at all. The Jinx is popping off. It will be a kill for Bromas. Now, Ari's in. 9 to 5, though, gets blown up by Selinny. So Team Tan gets something, but this Jinx is a problem. Wellsy on the Jinx. I mean, insanely well played there. Just able to poke them out and be able to find the Alistair before the, the diving came through with mispositioning from from uh, Team Tan, and it just allowed her just to auto space perfectly to be able to chunk them out and get that ultimate to be able to get the reset, Sandia. which I going for the dive though. Sandia has to be careful, because this is going to be an exciting Jinx. Sandia cannot stay here. That is a free kill being given over to Wellsy. A rampage now. Gizmo is falling out of um, Team Tan's hands right now. 
get, and I can't help but think that that 750 gold that, she, that the Jinx has got is really snowballed to, to be able to get that play play happening. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I don't think she would have been able to pick up the kill before to get the excited to stop Harry with the victor from the dive. And now it's just snowballed out of control, and she goes straight into the last whisper as well to completely just go LDR and just destroy and run over this game. Yeah, Shaper is now being stunned here by Mars. This is, could be an engage from the Javan. The flash from 9 of 5 forced away since they not have the ultimate ready. Here goes Zephyr, potentially looking to kill uh, Simon here. I do think yeah, the ultimate is still up there, but yeah, not going to be able to use that. Simon Ferocious dies, and this could be a Herald and potentially a way to come back into this game for Team Tan. But do you even win the Herald fight here when the Jinx has already rotated up? Is Jinx put two of an MF at this point? Because, I mean, it feels like it. It really does Big feel like it. Look at that poke. I mean... Yeah, well, there's no Unbreakable here now for Bugly. So maybe if they can lock down Wellesley, there is a potential chance. But Wellesley's playing it very safe right now. The charm goes wide from 9.05. And Harry does get hit, though. You see 9.05. I love the aggression. Really trying to make a play happen here. But it looks like uh, Team Rocket are backing off for now. They're going to get some vision control here, Team Tan. So, flank. yeah, they're starting it off. The flank is there, and it looks like they might just be able to get it so far because Team Rocket currently not looking for any engage. I'm going to trade it for the mid tower. They're taking a, 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 something that can destroy towers for an actual tower. Maybe they, they can rotate this into the other one. Victor going aggressive onto the Jinx. Can we see anything yeah. happen in here? Chaos Storm being put down, but not really doing too much. It's a big chunk, though, to Wellesley's health. Does have to flash, though, but the Herald goes over to Team Tan once again. Now, the thing, of course, about the Herald versus Dragon thing is the fact that Heralds, yes, they give you money. Yes, they get you turrets, but these dragons are stats that will stay forever. So these trades still not that great for Team Tan, but hey, something on the board could just get you back into the game. Yeah, and, and the best thing about taking this Herald here is that uh, if they wait long enough, uh, they, they might actually be able to pull underneath the uh, the objective bounty system, and then they can herald and get two two towers, and then come straight back into it and uh, burst the, the gold lead in their favor. Uh, I believe the the, the the threshold is was two and a half k. I'm not exactly sure, but it so, could be yeah. So they they could they could be just on the edge. I think it starts at, at about twenty minutes, so they could be just within that in that reach now. So. Maybe we'll see it happen, maybe not. If not, I'm expecting just to use it mid, just to trade that power. Bot lane power is already yeah. low enough anyway, so... Let's see that position. Oh, they are setting up for the strike, though. Oh, good flag there to spot our Bugly and Shaper. So, they are not going to be able to get a sneaky catch here, but they will be able to get some vision control, as 905 has already made their way here to the Dragon side. Now, Wellesley walking back to uh, maybe uh, get a buy that he wasn't able to get before. I love that. The Lord Dominic second. It's the correct item to go for. I would have maybe not finished it, uh, but I think it is still extremely strong against the combo of Team Tan. I mean, I would have gone Collector personally, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> of course. Certainly, certainly. Don't believe him, guys. Don't believe him. That's actually one. Well, on the top side, uh, believe it, there is going to be a fight site. Selene, though, also in a lot of trouble. Oh, Zephyr, though, fight. not doing any damage at all to Simon Ferocious. The build is just too strong. It's a good parry, but will it be enough? No, it will not be a good flash. The flash follow-up does get out. Well played there by Zephyr, but Simon Ferocious is just so strong in his top lane, and it does mean that once again, Rocket get themselves a dragon, and that is going to be sword point at 20 minutes in the game. Yeah, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge your mod queue, and I'm telling you, Zephyr's been practicing. Uh, just able to slip out of that very perfectly there. You're going to TP back to this tower just to try and protect it. I think it's going to go down eventually, but it looks like he's going to keep it up here. Mars is coming up as well. Maybe they'll be able to make a play off of this, but if not, I just see that this, this matchup's just really not going in the favor of Zephyr, and I think he's going to need some, some magic resist or even just some healing reduction just to deal with this mod. Yeah, and, and, and it's rough, right? I do think that Fiora does skill better than Maud, but Maud still skills decently well, so having that guy ahead is incredibly uh, painful here for Team Tan because it does mean that their side lane is not in a winning matchup, and currently, none of their matchups are winning, so they really have to try and find a way uh, to come back to this game, and, well, the Baron, of course, is up. That could be a potential uh, thing to play around. What do, what do we need to see here from Team Tan Gizmo to try and come back into this game? Because obviously, Wellesley needs to die, but how are they going to be able to find a play like that? It's going to have to be on, on, on Wellesley to make the play for them here. Bad position is, is going to be the, the name of the game, right? You're going to have to punish them uh, correctly. Uh, looks like we might actually see one here. Maybe going a bit too aggressive on the Zephyr. We might be able to see an engage here. Yeah, there it comes. Cataclysm comes out, but it's just going to be traded for the Flash. But I do think Team Tan are going to be very happy with that. Yeah, but look at the uh, the Ari coming out. 
You just pushed him close to your oh. carries, mate. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think that's what you want. Nine of five, of course, still has the ultimate ready as well. So not flank. really too scared at all. The flank comes out. Wells is still dishing out so much damage here. There it is, though. Nine of five gets blown up by Team Tan. This could be the fight that they're looking for. But here comes the onslaught of Shadows and the teleport. But look at Wellsy doing so much damage to Team Tan. This turret has barely any HP left. That's going to be an excited jinx. They have to try and run away. And Chris coming in. So yeah, it's a big engagement from the Reckon. Look at all the damage. Jinx is not nearby. If she only had flash, the Zap is going to be there. It's another reset. They find two kills. Can they find more? Wellsy looking for a potential dive. The knockup does not hit. That's going to be a double kill. That's going to be a triple kill. Jinx is unstoppable. The perfect position in there from the Jinx to be able to get those orcos off. Perfect. Just able to position just outside the tower range with the with the rockets. Just to be able to get that, that splatter across. To be able to get that excitement. Uh, there was a slight slight herald mishap that happened during that fight but for the most part it's just gonna be a baron here uh, it's crazy 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 we're 22 23 minutes in and the baron is already on the border for rocket and frankly there's nothing that team tan can do about this one because what is the support really have to say in this situation well if we see this steal i'm gonna go absolutely crazy but look at the damage from nine and five just going to take and jinx takes it anyway. jinx takes well, it anyway. he takes another kill nine one and four this jinx is popping off his mode yeah and i gotta say it's the ldr purchase i'm telling you that thing is broken i oh, mean yeah? just able to completely just take over the game i know the mf is matching it now but it's a jinx. She's able to apply it so much more rapidly. And she's just an insane champion. And as soon as she gets one of these kills, he just starts popping off. Going in deeper. And, and you just can't match it. Even Victor, Victor put down the, the stun. And it, it, she just walks out of it. Like It's just cr it's crazy hard to be able to lock down this jinx. And you have to focus it so heavily now to be able to get anything down. And it's completely now on her misplaying. Yeah, and we talked about it. We talked about how it is so important for Team Tan to take Wellsy out of these fights. And they tried, right? They tried to go in with that engage. They forced the flash, but after that, they really found no way in. They have to do this again because now there is no flash on Wellsy. Now there is no heal on Wellsy. Everything is down. This has to be the time for them to look for something. And Celine now, maybe looking for more guys, but honestly, Gizmo, do you want this fight? No, I don't think you do. He has ultimate up. Unless you're able to parry it this time, I think it's going to be pretty bad. Well, that's a lot of bursts coming out as well. The ultimate is not even going to get there. So Zephyr does get it. Simon Froch is not able to react in time. So Team Tan gets something on the board. They get the Mordekaiser down. But how much does it really mean? Well, they weren't able to push us into the tower. If they were able to get that tower, they could have got the objective bounty as well, which could have been a bit better for them. But either way, it's one person off the board. It's putting Zephyr in a better position to carry in the side lane, stopping the mod from being off the farm, so it's worth it. But his mod's going to be caught out here. He has no flash. He's just... Oh. In so much trouble, but Wellsy and uh, Bugly kind of respecting uh, this here because, of course, their top laner, uh, sorry, their mid laner rather, is in the top lane right now, gets a turret down, looking towards the inhibitor turret already. Team Tan have no one on that side of the map. They have to do something to react it. They get them turret up themselves. That is, of course, pretty nice. The dragon is up in 15 seconds, but look at Ari. Yeah, and MF has been sent, sent to, to try and defend, but it, it's, it's, you can only do mid lane, which means this top lane is going to be completely open just by a, a smart micro decision. They don't need to go for the Drake straight away. They can just wait, and now everyone's had to reset to try and chase the Zari, and they, can, they, they should be able to just walk into this Drake pretty much. Uh, it yeah. should be a, a, what, a 4v2 now? Walking yeah, three people to 905. This is this is problematic here, but here is the engage coming into Wellsy. Can they finally get the kill? No, they cannot. It's a disaster. Legendary Jinx. That's gonna Ooh. be two kills, but they get the kill in the end. But in the top lane, the inhibitor is falling. It might be even a base push coming out there. It is basically Fiora against the world. She's buying a lot of time. But it's three members of Team Rocket now, and they can start off this dragon. They can get this dragon right now because the smite is there as well. This is a disaster for Team Tan. Can they turn this around? I mean, they're, they're calling they're calling the members over as fast as possible, but but can they even get here in time? I mean, they can just if they just don't turn onto this Fiora, I think it's fine, but Braum maybe get oh, a bit could be a kill here. But Braum is tanky, but that is going to be shut down for Zephyr. Gets out as well. There is a smite though, but a bullet time is not good. It's going to be this and get themselves two extra kills, but the soul goes over to Rocker. Yeah, with with the Unbreakable down, with Braum dead, the, the ultimate from the MF just comes through. Uh, just getting there in time, I think the MF movement people, the W was able to help her get there just perfectly. But yeah, I mean, just um, I feel like they could have just burst that much faster if they just focused the objective and just left the Fuhrer to, to her own devices. But either way, I mean, they get the soul. 
you take the kills if you can, but now you've got to deal with having a bigger shield on their carries. Yeah, it's it's just looking so rough for Team Tan because I feel like the Mautosaur is one of the worst that you could be facing here right now because it is all about one-shotting this Jinx. And well, we, we speak a lot about this Jinx, but honestly, 905, very, very strong as well. Uh, of course, has been able to get all those turrets in the top side. The inhibitor is down, so there is permanent pressure here on the side of Team Tan. So... How are they going to be able to deal with this Gizmo? Because right now, of course, there are no objectives coming up. We have a Baron in two minutes, so there is a bit of time for them, you know, to farm up uh, this inhibitor's wave. Who do they want to put it on? Because still, it looks like they just have no answers right now to Wellsy, especially when all the summoners are back up. Yeah, I think he had to put this farm on the Victor just to keep him in the game. But, he, he, but I think they, they need this Fuhrer to be strong enough to be able to... To, to find a flank in the backside, and, and if he's able to catch up this Jinx one shot, we saw in the last fight that it wasn't very, very much that she needed to do to be able to boost through that Jinx after the J4 knockup, right? So we need to see that yep. again, especially when she, now that the mana immunity is being complete, the, no, the more mana, sorry, because it gives you more mana, <laughs> um, is complete, so they're able now to just... I actually didn't get that before. I've never gotten that before. That That's the first time for me. Unbelievable. Um, I... <laughs> But the Fury, the Fury needs to be able to find the flank and be able to boost this. It is now harder with the shield, but he does have the the, the, the tools at uh, her disposal to be able to boost through it. And if the Brom's misposition, not not standing on top of this Jinx, she should be able to find it pretty easily. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe Zephyr can find a kill here on Super Froze, but Simon Froze, but look at the damage. It is a lot, the teleport is coming in, and could that be enough? No, it will not be. Zephyr is unstoppable. Might be looking for a second killer, actually. Look at the damage on 905. Zephyr trying to take Team Tan on his back. Scaling has happened. This Fiora is able now to survive in the side lane and even burst through this Ari with the TP through. Now, it, does this mean that the, the mid lane they're able to make a play? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that they're, they're going to back off, but it looks like Mars might be called out here. Ultimate maybe a bit yeah, too early. Yeah, Flash coming in. Flash coming in from Rocket, doing a decent damage. There's going to be a stun here onto the Alistar. Can he get out, though? It's very tanky, of course, with the ultimate. So, yeah, we'll be able to walk out for now, but it is just the pressure, right, that is being applied right now by Team they Rocket. That's the Baron, Baron is coming up. They just they might. Around. They got Jinx. They got they might. and Hecarim in the area. They can just sit. They just saw that they chunked out. Uh, they just chunked out the support. They know that the no vision. Is lane. This, this, this is a Baron. This, this, this is just a Baron. I but, think it might just be a Baron. That is a ward. That's a good ward. They get the they information. Have, unless Sandy, I can steal it with ultimate on the MF. I don't think it's possible. And even then, Brom just gonna put on the back shield. That's it's, it's a god Baron. That's it's it. Dead. Scott. Just like that, Team Rocket get themselves the Baron out of nowhere. Normally, we've seen Team Tan try and fight over these situations, but this time around, they were just simply not ready, and it might have just been that burst that was put on Mars that sealed it for them. Yeah, I mean, the macro decisions here from, from Rocket have really been on point. I mean, they they, they, they know what they're doing. They, they can read Tan like a book, and I, though now they do have... Now Tan had to have that sideline pressure with the Fuhrer and stuff. They're not using it to be able to get to these objectives. And I mean, so far they have only uh, they've only had a chance to get that second Herald. And I mean, even pushing down these these towers have been pretty hard for them. So I, I just I feel like it's just going to be raw cat now to the end unless this this Fuhrer can get onto this Jinx and just burst through her. Yeah, and I do think we have to put, you know, a bit of a... I didn't want to say applause, but I guess that's the word I came up with. For Zephyr, of course, right? Really keeping Team Tan uh, into the uh, the race right now. And in fact, might be looking for more here against Simon. We've seen this 1v1 go one way before. Are we going to see that again? That it's is not the best parry. Simon actually might be winning out on this one. It's very close, oh, Zephyr. Could be looking for the outplay. It's almost brilliant, but the shutdown goes over to Mordekaiser, Kaiser, and now it is a true disaster for Team Tan because in one minute thirty, it is the Elder Drake, and to me, I think is but that might be the only chance they have left. As now, nine oh five going in deep, can they find anything? It will be Mars running away with it for now, but with Baron up, minions in the bot lane, they are looking for an inhibitor. Yeah, it's just about not losing too much now before this Elder to try and contest in that fight. That fight, but. If Zephyr's not able to match Mordecai's and now, it's, it's going to be scary. And I think he just needs healing reduction to be able to get through that. You'll see it's in the oh, game. Cataclysm comes in. There is the bullet time. Doing some decent damage, but is it going to be enough? They are just too what far behind. They don't get a kill. They get Simon, at least. That is one. The knockback is there, but there is no turret to defend him this time around. Heckman going in very, oh, very deep. The flash comes out. <laughs> That's a big chaos stop. A three-man knockup is his for Wilsey is dead and this could be it the sun kill the inhibitor does go down they can maybe find more that is another knock up to 905 there is no ultimate there so they might be able to get this kill it is a dragon on the board if they get it it's
Will Team Tan with a comeback of the ages. Can they fight 905? Yes, they will. That is an ace coming out with the Elder Trade coming up in 30 seconds. Yeah, and that leads perfectly into the Elder. I mean, the Hecarim's not even up in time for the start of the Elder. That's, that's a brilliant, perfect chaos storm there from, from the victim. Just perfect engage timing. I mean, they've been waiting on this the whole time and they're able to get it. It just one shot them. Just keep playing and that jinx. I thought she was able to free hit. Little did I know they were just baiting for the victor. Just the instant one shot. And that's now a massive shutdown. They're going to be able to pick up this. They should be able to pick up this Herald. Let's just move this into it. As long as a Jinx Rocket doesn't come out of nowhere. I'm just full shot knowing it. Ready for a clip. Oh, don't say it. Don't say it. This was such an extraordinary play here by the Simon Team Tan. They burst this dragon like it was nothing before. Can they do it? Will Jinx we Rocket see it? Will steal? It has been sent. That's not going to be able to do it. That is the Elder Dragon with a bounty for Team Tan and well if there's one way they can come back is well it is with the elder yeah i mean elder is just the most broken uh, broken buff in the game and if you don't know much about league i mean i can tell you it's broken um um yeah is this the perfect chance for them to be able to come back into this game here yeah it should be allow zephyr just completely silent and free uh, and be able to take any trade that he wants if not they can just group and take team fights now I mean, I think they could, they're just able to burst through the front line even faster and get on to Wesley. Yeah, but you'd have to think they have to do something, right? Because they're still, of course, behind. Yes, well, not necessarily behind, but it is, of course, the fact that Wellesley is so strong. That is more so the problem, right? It's this Jinx that just dishes out so much damage. But once again, no heal, no flash. There's also no flash on 905 right now. So if there's any time they have to look for a fight, it is right now. They got the Elder. They got the Summoners. How are they going to find it, though? Well, the, the problem is, is that they have to pull them towards something, but they have nothing to pull them towards, right? There's no objectives yeah. on the board. So, you know, as much as it is massive, Rocket, I just going to sit back and go, you know what? We'll just wait out the bar. We're just going to wait out the Elder. You don't have Baron. We have we have the Mountain Soul. We can just deal with that after. The most impressive thing, though, is that Tan's back in the, in the lead in the gold. Okay, that after that that play, that they just picked up so much gold because objective bounties are balanced and completely fair in the game. So it's a crazy situation that they're in, and I just want to bring our attention to the gold graph here. I mean, it, it it doesn't look like it, you know, that there's much difference here. But the Zephyr in the top lane is pretty much carrying the gold lead for oh, his yeah. team. He really is, and well, we've seen the one v ones be looking pretty decent in those. Now the question is, can Zephyr take Team Tan on his back? Because even though it's been Zephyr has been playing well, we have to, you know, give a pat on the back to Harry because that last fight was incredibly well played. And also Slinny, of course, with that knockup on Wellsy was really all you need. They have the damage, they have the burst to take down Wellsy even with this soul. They just have to find an opportunity. And well, right now, of course, they have just been waiting out this Elder Dragon because, well, it, it would make no sense for Team Rocket to look for an engage here. So it is going to be a fair fight without the Dragon, most likely. Yeah, and I mean, like, can, you, can you imagine going at uh, the old um, Serpent's, is it Serpent's Fang or Shadow? The, yeah. the one that gets rid of the shield into this comp now. Yeah, I mean, Serpent's Fang. Yeah, yeah look, look at like uh, every one of them has shield, every one of them, like, due to the, the, the Mountain Soul, right? But also a lot of them have them into the kit. I mean, it could be a crazy item across the board. Maybe Furo could look into getting that, but looks like they're going for the, the uh, healing reduction. Not the healing reduction, the MR here early on just to allow that side lane push. Uh, how do you see this game proceeding here? Do you think that we're going to see a massive fight, just just a coin flip at Baron? I mean, it has to be, right? It has to be, because it is really the only thing that is up right now. The Elder Dragon is only three minutes away, and, well, it looks like both teams are starting to walk around towards this Baron. Now, Zephyr's going to be sent over towards the bot lane. Has the teleport ready? And there's actually no one to answer that. So if they can, if Team Tan can buy enough time here for Zephyr to get a push going into this bot lane, they might have an advantageous position. But you're pushing into super minions. It's going to be so hard to set that yeah. up. I mean, it, I mean, pretty much impossible unless you got stacking waves. So it's always going to hit back on them. So they have to be careful with this. It, he is showing there, but does this mean that as Rollcat, you're just going to take the flip and, and just try and force it in the four seconds that TP takes the channel? Yeah, well, we'll see. It is extremely tense between the two teams right now. It looks like Team Town are going to have to give up the vision control of the Baron for now, at least. Lenny looking for a potential engage, but he's kind of just, just lurking around, seeing if they can find an opportunity to get Wellesley down. But while we spoke about the summoners, they are back up for practically everyone here. So this is truly going to be the last stand going, of the game. Going, they're going on, on the right, midway right, push and the top wave. They have the waves in position for this. They can start it, but... MF isn't here. MF had to go catch mid midwave, so. 
Denny. I will looking to look for a steal. Is he going to be able to find it? No, he gets no. It's going to be the jinx. He gets the knock up. It is going to be enough. They are getting absolutely shredded. It's a really good bullet time, but it is not going to be enough. Rocket get themselves two kills. Can they fight more? Yes, they can. It's a shutdown on Zandia, and that has to be the game, Gizmo. Has to be the game there. I mean, they're all just piling into this jinx. Who's just just free firing somehow? The jinx secures the Baron out of the two smites. Just neither of them went through, and then. She collects that, she gets excited, she just one-shots everyone, you're dragging them all into a pit. I mean, Victor and everyone else was behind, they weren't able to join Sunny when he first engaged, so it just offered just a free fight, and I mean, Rocket are just five strong here, just sitting there, just, just you know, playing together, and now it's just a 2v5 on the Nexus. Oh, that's good damage coming in, though, from Harry. Is he going to be able to do enough here? It's still looking good, but Wellesley is just doing so much damage. It was a fantastic effort by Team Tanner as they get blown up into the base. The Nexus is being focused. Team Rocket are not playing around, and it will be 1-0 for Team Rocket. Yeah, and for a second there, I thought maybe we would have seen a, a, a G2 versus Misfits uh, ending there, you know? <laughs> oh. uh, any pro player fans uh, will love that reference, but oh, yeah, yes. I mean, it was a it was a close game, right? Uh, at certain points, it was a coin flippy back and forth. But overall, I mean, it's just the hyper carry difference. You've got to match this jinx. We said in, in picks and bans to, to get rid of it, get it out, out, off the screen, get, you know, pick something to run it down or, or whatever, you know. But I just don't think that MF was, was the answer. Like, you have, you, you had great team fighting uh, options, but then the Braum just completely counters it because you just puts up the unbreakable. All of a sudden, then you can't use one of the biggest parts of your kit, which is the ultimate. Uh, and then, you know, He's just able to free fire and then chase you down afterwards because you're a lockdown ADC. Just completely opening the floodgates for Jinx to carry. Yeah, just an incredibly strong performance here. Honestly, I would even say from both teams because the fact that Team Tan managed to worm their way back into this game is absolutely incredible. It's definitely a good look um, for the next game coming in. Uh, but I have to also, you know, give my props to Shaper on this Hecarim because might be 1, 4, and 12. Might have not seen a lot of it, but I feel like he's definitely set up so many of these plays, especially in this early game, being so incredibly aggressive in the jungle of Slinny to make sure that Team Rocket were able to get the victory here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, they, they played it really well. And I think we're, oh, we're already, sorry, I'll get rid of the scoreboard because I think we're already starting to get into this next game. Uh, I, I don't know how fast they're going to go, but... Uh, Looks like it will be pretty fast. Let's see if I can get you in here. Yep. There uh, we go. Hopefully this one, it will work around. The quality of what I've been watching right now, by the way, guys, has been so bad. It was literally like <laughs> four, like 140p. Uh, but, you know, it, it worked out decently well enough. Um, but either way, before we get into this game, we're going to take a very, very small break. Um, so absolutely make sure you do not go anywhere because we have a banging series on our hands. Definitely a banger.
And welcome back to the Esports Wales League of Legends Twitch stream. We have a banger on our hands right here, Mr. Gizmo. Team Tan versus Team Rocket. It was incredibly close, but unfortunately, near the end, Team Tan just did not have enough to make the comeback happen. Yeah, and I mean, it was completely on, on Wesley's hands. Uh, well, shoulders, basically. I mean, that, that dude was carrying his team across the finish line, it felt like. Just completely 1v9, well, not 1v9, but just destroying everyone on the Jinx, right? Just sitting in that back line, and it just took a team fight where we saw y uh, Tan take him down to, to be able to get objectives and, and push on. But after that, then, he just got into another team fight where he was untouched. You, you, you one fight you're focusing in with everything next fight you, you just untouched and then you just three hits and it's jinx all of a sudden she gets hyper it, she destroys you so i'm looking forward to this next game where i see a jinx ban or maybe you pick up her sister vi and you cc chain her and destroy her yeah because i gotta say i don't think their comp was necessarily bad against the jinx at all they have plenty of ways to get on her but it's weren't able to execute it as well as they would have hoped for so yeah Jinx Bank could be potentially something, because I do want to speak about the draft. Uh, we got, are going to get ourselves into that very soon, but what is the biggest difference that we want to see here, right? Because we saw so many mid lane bans. Are we going to see the same kind of thing? Or maybe, yeah, as you said, maybe take the Jinx away, maybe ban it. What does uh, Team Tan need to change here for them to pick up this next game? I, I'd, I'd rather see those bans get focused towards the bot lane. I think, though we though Tan like to play a weaker side bot lane, I think that you need Zandia to have... A stronger carry, right? Because the Jinx, the Jinx just outscaled the MF, got that massive shutdown, and then just ran away with the game. And at that point, then it just felt felt uh, so hard to come back in. And you target target band mid. And uh, let me tell you, the Ari still useful, still do it, doing yeah, things, dashing it in and out, getting the right the right charms, picking up uh, like like pixel perfect like charms to, to oh, champions. brilliant. Uh, and like so I feel like putting those bands towards that mid lane to a certain extent isn't useful Maybe you just take the Lissandra vs LeBlanc matchup that you decide to ban out the first time around And you, you just trust it like either Harry's got the, Le the LeBlanc matchup or the Lissandra one in, in his favor for Team Yara Yeah, well, we'll see if they're gonna do that as we get ourselves into the draft. This is game two It's a best of three as a reminder for everyone in the chat right now we do see two mid lane bans immediately coming out. Corky being taken away by Rocket and Lissandra still being taken away by Harry, which does mean, of course, that um, it does look like they just don't want to play uh, as the Lissandra here. Maybe they want to take the, the, the LeBlanc this time around, but maybe the LeBlanc Ari matchup is more their flavor. Maybe that's what they feel like. Yeah. Uh, it looks like we are seeing the Shen ban as well taking away. That, that makes perfect sense, as we talked about in the first game, the ability to go cross map. Uh, it looks like they are getting rid of the Jinx. Thank God, you had that champion off my screen. I hate playing against it, and I never get to play with it, so it's just completely unfair. <laughs> I was going to say, wait, are you going to say I hate playing with it as well? Because, <laughs> But that is uh, not the case, well, unless they are terrible with the traps. But that, that's a conversation for another time, obviously. The Vayne being taken away here, and once again, we saw this last time as well, the Gwen has been taken away too. Now, I would not be surprised if we see a bot laner being first picked here, Gizmo. Yeah, and do you know what the best first pick that you can think of for a bot lane is? Sivir. Uh, that champion is completely, um, <laughs> completely and utterly useless. Sorry, that, that that's just some advice from my uh, solo queue ADCs. They always tend to pick Sivir. I've never seen it played in any other like any other <laughs> rank, any other league. Just 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 in my games. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that that off topic. Anyway, I, I it has yeah, I just let that out. Right, it's okay, it's okay. Well, it does mean that Tao Xin, Xin Zhao, I keep saying it that way, uh, is being picked here as the first pick, and well, we see a Viego being uh, the pick here to react to it. I love that. I think Viego personally is really strong. I also find him really fun to play. He's pretty broken, uh, but let's see what the second pick is uh, going to be here for Team Tan. It might be that Caitlyn, another champion that you don't like. Hey. Okay, I, I don't mind if it's a good Caitlyn, but I just don't know very many good Caitlyns. Uh, but I will say I do like the Viego pick, because if you can't play the champion that you, you wanted to play, you just pick Viego, or you killed them, and mm -hmm. you pick the champion anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's going to be fun to see. Caitlyn, I feel like you have to you have to focus bot now. You have to play around that bot lane. You've got to leave Zephyr on an island, up in that top lane, to, to do whatever he wants to do. But this Caitlyn has to be the focus. Looks like we're seeing another MF pick Wow. Here. That's a surprise when you still have like Jin, uh, Twitch, you know, Cogmo, uh, any other ADCs you want to throw in there that are, that are good at the moment into this kit. Yeah. And yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know. I, I don't like, I really don't like the kit and pick first because like, 
Seth is known, uh, Sandy, Sandy is known for playing like the, the Zaya, the, um, the Cluster. Like, why don't you just pick one of those if you're going to ban out the Jinx? Because even if they pick the kit in late game, you just run it over anyway. Like, they have to be so far ahead to, to, to play this kit, they're playing the kit in like spot lane. Yeah, well, yeah, they are just... It's, it's interesting, right? Because I feel like it's a strong lane. It's a very, very oppressive lane. But with this Brawn pick, you know, Bugly is, has already played a really good game on it. It's going to be looking pretty annoying for them to deal with, right? Because it blocks Caitlyn Q, it blocks Lux, Lux's Q. Yes, you still get stunned, but the damage is just not going to be there. It blocks the e, it, it blocks basically everything, right? I guess so. Well, Luxar, they really Luxar have to somehow through. not. Yeah, Luxar does go through. That is true, of course. That feels but bad. It does mean that there's a lot of protection here for this misfortune in this lane, as Aurelia is going to be the next ban. Yeah, I mean, it, it pretty much says, hey, you're, you're focusing to, to destroy this bot lane, focus out of lane, just just, just CC chain and one-shot us, but we're playing Broom, so like that, that idea's out the window. And all of a sudden, they've drafted this super aggressive bot lane, har harass heavy. Yeah. And and the Broom can pretty much just, just stop that. And if the Broom jumps to a minion and decides to go for an all-in, I'm pretty sure you can just get stunlocked and, and one-shot us the Caitlyn Lux, if he, if he time it right. And if your jungler's not in the bot, doesn't path towards this bot side, this Kate, this Kate Lux lane is just so fragile. It needs yeah. so much more support. We've seen it picked across major regions into like Jinx. Okay, yes, Caitlyn is a counter to Jinx in lane, but as soon as you get out of lane, Jinx is able just to, to, to run these team fights because Caitlyn's so mechanically hard to play in these team fights. You have to be so far ahead to make it worth your while. This is why I dislike this champion. You have to get five plates, five kills, and a, a, at least a, a 20 CS lead to be useful in the game. And even then, it's debatable. So, Hopefully we see this do do a bit more, but looks like we've just seen a Graves top pick. Okay. Yeah, Graves top pick being blind picked here. Very interesting uh, here by Team Tan. I wonder what the thought process is. Uh, yeah, I, I do like, of course. Uh, Going to give a, a kind of shout out to Fresco in the chat. Uh, what he said because it's true, right? Like Caitlyn is incredible into the Jinx, and I feel like if at this point you would have banned the Braum instead and just let them go Jinx in with whatever, the Caitlyn locks could have been incredibly oppressive, but. Yeah, maybe you just don't have the faith that they are going to be, uh, you know, getting ahead, as you said, was so important uh, for their lane. So, picking it anyway, but banning away the Jinx. Interesting choice, but we'll see what that is going to mean for the game. As Orn Aurelian. is just going like, to be a really good team fighter, And, yeah, Aurelian being hovered. Well, will it be picked? That'd be interesting. I don't think so. I think it's it's had the honors of casting that, but yeah, it has to be LeBlanc, right? It's still left open. Uh, 9 of 5, of course, also plays it. And this leaves Harry to pick something other than the Lissandro to counter it. Um, yeah, could potentially be something AD, but that does mean that they heavily rely on Lux for the AP damage. Yeah, which means you have to focus even more towards this bot lane because if she gets behind, it, it, yeah. it's crazy. And then you have to go for the Ludens Lux instead of the Chrome Lux because you need the AP damage. Mm. I feel like Akali is the perfect option here with Harry's champion pool. So happy to see that locked in. It is, a, it, I believe, it's a, a heavily skilled matchup with LeBlanc into, into Akali. Akali struggles a lot in early lane, oh, yeah. especially with the fact that you know she doesn't get a lot of energy, so she has to then like. Push the lane, use um use a shroud to get her energy back so that she can push harder, and then all of a sudden then you're exposed because you don't have your shroud. So it, it, it feels sort of rough there with that pick, but I think they were sort of expecting that they were able just to rotate back into the LeBlanc uh, later on, but you sort of banned out the, the counts to, to the LeBlanc, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, honestly, when I look at these comps, the first thing that I see, Gizmo, is how in the world... Are they in the late game going to kill the Orn, uh, the Tao Shit, the Xin Zhao, and the Braum? Because uh, if builds. this Caitlyn doesn't get ahead, then what are they going to do? It has to be either Viego, Graves, or Caitlyn getting miles ahead, right? Um, miles and miles, I'm telling you. They, they will yeah. need to be able to buy at least three LDRs to deal with the Orn at this point. And, and I mean, I'm expecting to see the. Um, I'm expecting to see Crit uh, Graves here. I, I think that's better into the. On, off the top of my head, I'm not too sure, but yeah, I think um, obviously that is the lethality one. I'm hoping that Caitlyn also just goes with the normal build, no, no bothering with this Dark Harvest one shot lethality build because then you definitely don't have a chance of dealing with this Orn or this. Oh no! <laughs> so it, it feels sort of rough from the side of ten with this draft, right? Because they they have drafted all squishy, they have drafted very much. They have to burst and get out, and then. I have to be able to hope that they can one shot, and then the other team's gone. You know what? We've got pit champions that delay the team fight even more. Yep. And then we have a LeBlanc that's dashing in and out of your backline, and your backline peel is Lux. Like, it's going to be that's, very yeah. hard. And I know as the Lux, 
how hard it is to play into a LeBlanc because you're walking around with 1k HP and a LeBlanc can just QW and all of a sudden you're either dead or out of the fight for sure. So it's going to feel very hard to play here. You're going to have to make sure that everyone's on point with these CCs to be able to root this LeBlanc in place. And the old, I don't, I don't, don't get me on how to deal with this all. I mean, it's going to be a hard, hard day's work. It definitely is going to be a hard day's work. And I'm actually going to, speaking of the one, I'm going to put something out here. I wonder if you might agree with me. I think, let's say I were to be the coach here. Like, well, just, I wouldn't know the players too much, but it's just like, as a random thing, let's say this is solo goo. I would actually say here, send the Akali over to the top lane. It's a free lane into the Orn. Akali actually does really well into that lane. Um, and just put the Graves into the Blanc. Now, yes, of course, it... It does mean that the Graves doesn't get to get that free kind of farm as you would normally get in the top lane, but it does give the Akali that free farm. And to me, this Akali being basically the only reliable AP damage, unless, of course, Mars gets very far ahead in the bot lane, has to kind of get ahead, right? Yeah, I mean, you can take the Akali to the top side with the Divine Sandra into the AP build, right? And you do get that, like, damage against the Orn, but at the same time, the Graves passive of reducing the armor into the Orn makes a bit more sense. Yes, but so it's hard. But it's like, then, would you rather have the Akali with the Divine Sentry being able to just burst through their tankiness? Probably, because you have got Caitlyn Lux to deal with LeBlanc if you do CC chain him, and if you don't CC yep. chain the LeBlanc, uh, an Akali, an Akali, anyway, wouldn't really be able to do much into it. So I think maybe, maybe you would be tempted with that option. Uh, I, I feel like that would be something for them to review after the game, talk about if they, if they don't do the switch, and if they do, I, I yeah. mean, power to them, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I, that, that's why I mentioned it. I was like, ah, this could be a very interesting option here. Well, <laughs> we'll see if they're actually going to be able to do such a thing. Of course, um, it is perhaps out of comfort zone, right, for teams to do a lane switch like that, because obviously you're putting your mid lane in the top lane, top lane, mid lane. And despite the fact that these lanes might not, it's still a 1v1 lane, there's a load of differences between uh, these two lanes. So I don't expect it to happen. I don't think it's a bad choice. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what's going to happen. We are going to get ourselves into the game very soon. It allows us to look a little bit at the runes, uh, rune choices that we have here. Uh, e either way, let's say this Akali still goes mid. What is the build that we're expecting? Are we still going to expect to see Divine Sundra? Uh, I think if you go mid, you just go the full, like, one shot. There's no point going into the tankiness. I haven't seen a lot of people going into this chem tank, uh, like Akali build, you know, just yeah. using it for the meta, which is still insanely strong, but I feel like you just go for the full, the full AP. You go for the one shot. You just it's, at this point, you're gonna have to one shot that back line to have a chance of dealing with their front line, which is normally backwards, right? But it's the way yeah. that I feel like this game is gonna have to play out. Um, as we get into game here, let me just set this up. Oh, we well, already it have works a pause. for me this time, so we're gonna have yeah, we have a pause, uh, but we're actually going to have a cast that is not delayed by any means. So. Thank goodness, Riot, for helping us here. Uh, we are uh, getting ourselves into the game very soon. Um, yeah, we do see the Conqueror on Akali. Uh, so, you know, we, yeah, you, you tend to see it a lot anyway, even with, of course, the uh, the full AP. But it's one of those builds that is even better when you go for a half kind of tanky uh, Akali build. Uh, so, yeah, there's plenty of builds that uh, Harry can go for here. So it'll be very interesting to see what he is going to choose. Now, a bit of a pause here. Looks like we... Um, have um, a problem in the mid lane here for the side of Team Rocket. I don't think it'll last uh, too long. Maybe well, uh, hopefully not. Yes. No. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, but yeah, it allows us a little bit though to talk about the win cons, and especially I want to talk about the win cons of Team Tan because I feel like for Team Rocket it's pretty straightforward, right? They have a good front to back comp uh, composition. They have the tankiness that is very difficult to deal with here, and they also have a pretty decent scaling on their side. Um, considering the fact, of course, that there is a Caitlyn in the bot lane of the side of uh, Team Tan. But what is now, uh, to you, Gizmo, the main winning condition here for Team Tan to try and take this game? Uh, I mean, you have to play towards this bot side. I mean, Team Tan have drafted this this Caitlyn Lux lane, which is so, like, it, it, it's so so aggressive that you have to play towards it because mm -hmm. the way that they're going to play, I mean, whilst we're in a, in a secondary pause, I might as well just show you. They have to play in, in this area here, right? This is where they'll be playing. Uh, I know you can't see this, but I'm just showing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's okay. It's for the, the people. Th this is where Kit and Max tend to play because you have to get the push and then uh, target this tower, right? That's where they, they're going to be, right? So for that to work, you then have to have great warding, great, uh, great jungle presence to be able to come down know when the other jungler is and you have to be able to track the other jungler to know where it is this is why this lane is so important to get ahead because 
You need to be able to harass them on the tower, get these these tower planes, but also then survive through this. I like it. A bit of bot lane uh, information with Gizmo, you know, as a support himself. That was that was a nice little segment. I enjoyed it. Um, a a less nice segment, though. Could be here for Team Tan as there goes Mars. The ward is there, but gets caught out. That's going to be a flash force. The knockup does not hit. 905 does jump over. But an early flash there and a load of damage taken away by Mars. That is not how Team Tan wanted to start off the game. No, and then they've done the same thing where they've handed over the ward early to LeBlanc. So Harry's lane is already in trouble here where he's going to get the same thing happen where he's going to get level 2 on the first wave yet again. And th this this ward that has been placed down twice now has really put them behind and, and has really, you know, impacted Harry's mid lane both times. Yeah, uh, not a great start here for Team Tan, but uh, I do want to talk a little bit about the uh, difference of choice that we see here. But this time, of course, um, Team Rocket go with the same uh, tactic here, starting at the bot side of the map with the jungler. So Shaper is going to be making his way over to the top side, but Slinny on the top side. So we talked about it, right? They need to play around this bot side, and it looks like that is exactly what Slinny is looking to do. Yeah, parking straight towards that bot side as soon as possible. We're hearing pings non-stop as if they... Okay, Mars. That that was an interesting E. And now oh, he's going to get this CC is a chain. bit uh, risky. Yeah, he's that's going to be CC he's chain. Dead. The stun is dead. You're just done. That's a good exhaust, though. The flash comes in from Relzy. Is he going to have enough damage to take him down? It has to be Ooh. taken by the support. That is first blood. But now Sandia in trouble as well. That's another stun. This is a disaster for a team. Tan. Welzy takes that kill. And the bot lane that needs to get ahead get demolished. Yeah, and that's that lane over. Like, Kit and Lux, I can't stress it enough about how far ahead they have to be to be useful. And now they've just given over two early kills just for an e-poke on Lux. But was the was the hundred damage worth if it landed? I don't think so. And and now, granted, you didn't use enough. You didn't use a lot of summoners there. Just the exhaust to trade. But that is a lot given over to, to this bot lane. And the MF Grom can now just sit back, and they'll always be more useful. It is pretty disastrous here for the side of Team Tan. The bot lane that needs to get ahead is behind. Now, they still have a Viego pathing towards them, of course. And Shaper is in the top side of the map. That's a good knockup coming in onto Zephyr. He is in a bit of trouble as well. Has the flash ready. Is going to have to use it to get away from Shaper. So it will be a flash traded. Support uh, jungler, rather, for the top laner. Good Ruto coming out here. But look at that. That's the power of the Brom. The Unbreakable just blocks everything that comes out from them. Yeah, and then he can even just walk into a into a trap just to flex it. You know, he doesn't even need anything. And now look at <laughs> look at the problems that Harry's having in this mid lane. Oh. This is the the trouble with this Akali pick is that it's just so so bad early lane. And, and this is why we suggested this rotation up to the top lane. And now Zephyr, he's just trying to crash this yeah. under wave. He's trying to trying to You're execute set. to stop the assist gold coming through. That's actually pretty smart. If he gives the assist gold over, that's an extra 150 gold given over. So that that's a worthwhile just to run that in. It does look a bit odd, but respect it. Yeah, it's well played, but I feel like we have to talk about the fact that despite that being well played, it's still a very bad start here for Team Tan. They really need to try and pick it up because this is, of course, the last game. And now, once again, Lux in trouble. The blind goes wide. I mean, Brom could have engaged that on that. Uh, very Brom, close. Brom could have flashed on this. And, and now, look. Ooh. Oh, I love that from Slinny. He tried to, uh, you know, predict that W. Doesn't find it, but once again, Lux could be in trouble. Bugly looking to maybe go in, but... They are finding their way into this bot lane once again, but they are behind in CS, they are behind in XP, and Viego didn't really get off a gank, and that means that they're just wasting so much time, Team Tan. They have to try and find something, and perhaps it's going to be this dragon in 40 seconds. Yeah, I mean, what lane do you play to? I mean, look look at this, even bot lane getting engaged upon so easily. That is the flash coming from Berkeley. This could be a kill from Xanya, though. Gets a kill back. Could be a double kill. This might not be as bad as it initially looked. The trap does go wide, but Berkeley, is he going to be tanky enough? Could there be the Q? The Peacemaker comes through. Mm. Will get the kill, and Xanya gets the double kill. But now, Harry in trouble in the mid lane. Shaper has find it. There goes the chain. It is still going to be a root on Harry. That is surely going to be the kill to Shaper. It will be a one-for-one one in the end over the map. Yeah, and with a great play, bolt side for Tan just able to get something back in this lane. It's it immediately punished across the other side of the map by, by the Zinza going to mid lane and just punishing Harry in, in this mid side. I mean, look at the CS difference that's already arisen in this mid lane. It, 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 it's go gone going from worse to worse for, for them. Yeah, it's, it's looking pretty, pretty bad here. Well, at least, right, they have the lead in the bot lane now. Perhaps, perhaps Zandia 
can make something uh, work here. As now, Slinny, look at that. He is looking for a gank here on the Orn. I don't know if that's necessarily where you want to be putting your focus right now, especially with the fact that a dragon is coming up. But, well, the knockup is here. This could potentially be the kill on the Orn. There is a flash ready. They are doing quite a bit of damage. Simon is holding onto that flash for a long time. Does get out into the end. But that does mean that they are going to be able to find a push in the top lane. And Orn has to be careful. Is it worth just resetting here just to TP back? I mean, you, you see you see Zinzao's bot lane, but they're not going to attempt to dive on you after that, surely. Good if chain there on Harry. That is going to be the dive. Simon gets a knockup, though. That could potentially be one for one. Zephyr, is he going to be able to live? Yes, he will. Big there for Team Tan. They get themselves a kill on the top lane, but it will be traded for a dragon in the bot side. I'd like to clarify, I did say if he reset, it wouldn't be impossible to attempt the dive. If you stay, <laughs> yeah. it's very possible. Uh, that is good that they're able to get something back, but they did just open up, you know, the ability to get this Drake in the bot side for that kill. And now their bot side is, is got ganked again. Luckily, not, not much went down, but they were just able to get a free gank up, like, the free pressure again. Yeah, well played there by um, Team Rocket to just make sure that despite the fact that it didn't look good in the top lane, they still get something on the map. And that tends to be the way that we see League of Legends being played, right? If, if there's something, you're losing something in the top side, try and win something in the bot side. Although, I would have kind of hoped for Team Tan to look for things in the bot side. They need to get this bot lane ahead. We talked about it, we stressed it, rather, so much in the pick and ban phase. And, well, it's just not looking that way right now. Because, yes, you know, they get themselves two kills. But ahead, I wouldn't necessarily say so. Yeah, I mean, e even though they got those kills, they're still they're still scared of this MF um, yeah. Brom bot lane. And they have a right to be. This Brom, if he lands a Q, he can just jump to a minion and just instant engage. And there's not much you can do about it. Because you're, you're playing Lux, you're just so squishy. I would have rather seen, maybe seen it paired with a tankier. A tankier support with CC if you're going to do this lane, but I just I, this is why I don't like Pitman. This is this is the reason why it's just so hard to play with because you have to, you have to get this early advantage. You I can't stress how much you is necessary. Yeah, well, I, I think it's fine in the sense that you know, yes, you have to get ahead, you have to play around it, but you have to do it right. That's the whole point. You have to actually play around it. And now, of course, we do see Slinny in the boss side of the map, but. Most crucially, there is vision for Rocket on the Viego. So they know he's here. They know they just can play it safe and chill because I don't think they're going to be able to dive a Braum. Yeah, I mean, their setup for the Kitlin Lux lane is better than the Kitlin Lux lane, really, isn't it? I mean, look, look, they, call, yeah. they can catch the junglers before they even rotate down. And that passes everything we need to know about how this early game's gone for the side of town. Yeah just not great at all and look at the difference in the cs in the mid lane as well harry is already 12 cs behind and well it's it's just kind of disastrous and we do see that slinny is trying to look for things he's farming up and trying to become strong either way but Since right now team tan yeah they're gonna have to look for something yeah the, the, the shit, how, how are you gonna kill this guy i don't know it's looking really really rough here and well look at this yeah, this could be a Slinny uh, walking into a death trap here. Nah, looks like Shaper is just going to take DCS ships. and walk out. Passing ships, it's completely fine. He just walks out of his jungle, shows him the red buff, says, hey, look look what I've got. Um, yep, ouchie, ouchie. Yeah, but now I'm wondering if they're going to make a play for this Herald, because you are strong in this mid lane, you are strong in this top side. Do you try and just rotate it into the Herald, and then you could take that down? I I, I don't know. Like, Looks like Tanner are going to attempt Ooh. it, and... To the side of, uh, I forgot what their name is already. I don't know why. Rocket. Rockets. I mean, they just have no jungle God. left. There's They've no jungle got... here for Team Tan. Yeah, Rocket have just rotated down to this bot side. Is this a mistake here? Because you're just opening up the ability to take this, 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 girl, this um, Herald so early on. And then are you going to put this down on the kit and Lux lane just to help them back into this game? Help, help them maybe recover something? Or are you going to put it onto a different lane to snowball them heavier and hope that they can carry through? Well, potentially, yeah. It looked like Team Rocket wanted to go for it eventually, but decided against it. And, you know, I think maybe go for a dive in the boss side, but they do not decide to do that. The stun does not land on Wellsy. So, yeah, free uh, Herald here for Team Tan. Well played by them to, you know, see the opportunity to go for that and just get it so easily. Oh, that was a nice thread. Oh, the bullet time comes out. Not going to be able to kill. The flash is there, of course, for Mars, but... Yeah, very Next nicely played that, but ugly. Next time that comes off cooldown. Oh, that's a glacial fish, and that's a blow up. Wellsy gets the kill on Mars, and once again, it's Team Tan's bot lane losing out. Yeah, and he just lost Flash, and he just walked straight back up into a Braum, as if taunting him, that he just he just could just burn another Flash. I mean, he's Proto's boots so early, and yet he still 
it, it, it seems just to run it. That, that was a bit overly yeah. harsh, but like, come on now, like, <laughs> it's Kit and Lux Lane. You have to like, you have to play it aggressively, and you're getting run over by this this brawl. Yeah, it, it, it's just looking rough. We talked about how strong that brawl pick was, and. That's why I said maybe ban this Braun pick out now, but now Harry is actually in a fight with Shaper. Shaper does get himself that cam. They have been taking the cams left and right here from the side of Slinny, and now Shaper is going to be able to walk out. That's a good route, though. Can Harry maybe find a kill? Good <laughs> ultimate bait then. Look at the damage in the mid lane. Mars is taken away of the fight like he has been this entire game so far, Gizmo. Yeah, and that's what I said about in Champ Select is if this Lux isn't leveled, this LeBlanc can just ro one rotation and, and, and nearly one shot him. And that's not even an item complete for the LeBlanc and she's doing that. It's only going to get worse from here. Yeah, well, perhaps they can find some money here in this top side of the map. Oh, Harry, though, gets blown up by 905. Has to use the perfect execution to get the hell out of there. Is going to be able to do so, though. But now Slinny looking for a gank here in the top lane. Perhaps for a dive on Simon Ferocious. They are going to put down the Herald very early. And just, it almost feels desperate to try and get some money on the Graves. Now, though, they are going to go for the um, potential, potential dive here. There's no mana on Simon. Zephyr, is he going to have to damage there? Is the ultimate not going to do enough? And it just means that another free dragon goes over to Team Rocket. And they have been completely dominant on the dragons in this yeah, entire and, series. And it's got to be the worst case scenario that the Infernal is the one that came up. I mean, it could have been Mountain again, but no, Infernal. And, and you've got to think, you know this, knowing that it, it was going to be one or the other again. Once you saw the Cloud Drake was, was the next one up, right? You know it has to yeah. be, it has to be, you know, the three of the best, best ones. So you might as well try and prioritize Drake's then instantly because you know Cloud isn't going to be the, the, the soul. So it's actually going to come down to being important. And they, they didn't. They went for this topside play. They're able to get three platins. But is those three platins going to compare to what the, this dragon pressure of having these mounted objectives mean? Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll see if that's going to happen in mid lane. We see a bit of a trade. But there is something I want to point out, Gizbo. And it's kind of hurting me a little bit. We see an eclipse in the top play. Now... I get that it's obviously pretty strong on Grace. As actually Zanya might be in trouble. We are gonna have to pause that for a little bit. It has to use the flash. Linny is here to look for a potential counter gank, but with an eclipse, this orn is going to walk through you. How are you gonna kill him? Well, the eclipse passive does allow, does give extra uh, armor pen for every item that you have. So you do have to scale quite hard. But I feel like the crit build is just better overall. I've seen a good ultimate coming out there from Mars, but the Glacier Fisher is so much damage. The bullet time almost kills the Mars, but right now, but, there what? is the LeBlanc. 95 just gets that stun coming out on Slinny. Goes back in, cannot Ooh. even find a kill on the Brom. It's a disaster for Team Tanner. Sandiado might what? be able to find a kill. So much damage coming out. 905 is just lurking right now. I don't know why the camera's going to the top lane. We do not care right now. Let's look at Sandio. He's just getting oh, blown blow, yeah, up man. slowly, but surely. 905 takes that one down. Rocket are looking strong and have find themselves a 3,000 gold lead and are looking for more. Yeah, and in this best best of the three, I mean, with, with 10 already down, this is probably the worst scenario that, that they could see come in. I mean, I know it's the first game of season, but I, I honestly thought that this was going to be all their, all their series. And so far, it just seems like they're just not, not the team that they used to be. I mean, this was a finals team last season, and now, now, now they're getting taken down by, by the newcomers on the block, I assume. Well, yeah, but we have to also mention it is the start of the season, right? Like, it's the start of the group. It doesn't necessarily mean everything just yet. They still can come back. Although, I do say that Mars once again in so much trouble. Killing spree for 905. He's not having his game, Gizmo. That's not your jungle, buddy. You're not that guy. It's not. It's really not. I mean, we've seen literally Shaper as grab the blue buff, grab the red buff. Once again, going to grab the blue buff and has been grabbing chickens and wolves. I almost, it's just it's just free real estate for him. It is free real estate. That's all I can say, really, right? I mean, that's just it. It's, it's that right there. <laughs> I made that joke. I, I had to make that joke because it's not even a joke. It's the truth, Gizmo. And right now, all that Team Tan have been able to find for themselves is something in the top lane. And they are looking for Simon Ferocious once again. The turret is very low, so perhaps they can push this lane in and look for a kill here. I think Simon just has to give this up, but... He's not going to do so. I mean, you're Slinny, you're no. but don't you looking for a gank? Yeah. Well, there it just is. And oh, oh look at the bullet Mars. once again. Mars is so much trouble. There's the bullet time. That's going to be a kill. Stop and it. the Glacial Fisher gets Sandy. Oh. That's going to be a double kill. It's a disaster for Team Tan. And this misfortune is once again so strong. Gizmo. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't just, know what to say. just look at the pressure that you're applying. You're applying it all to this, uh, this Orlan in the top side. Do you know what Orlan's famous for? Not caring about lane at all. He is strong in lane. <laughs> you don't get me wrong, but he can scale past lane. Uh, he can just do whatever he likes. And then at the end of the game, he's a he's a tanky team team <laughs> team fighting champion that has a, an ulti <laughs> that just does the exact same thing no matter how leveled he is. And then he gives you know, he gives you your team items that outscale anyway. So unless you're getting so much more advantage in gold out of him, it's not worth it. And look what they're doing to your bot side, and you're still going to the top side. I mean, it, it's insane that, that this is how bad this pick has gone with the kit and Lux lane, which is so strong. It's just not not there. Yeah, and now. The last uh, game, of course, they played. They have been able to get the heralds for themselves, and they even got the first arrow. But even that, they have to give up right now. The dragon is going to be coming up. It is the sole point. As now, Harry might be in a little bit of trouble. Could be looking for a kill here on Wellsy, but just going to decide against it. In fact, could be in trouble here. It's staying a little bit too long. Goes back in, but has to use the ultimate to get back out. Slinny not going to be able to find anything, and Bugly. Looking for a stun, but also unable to find anything. But it does mean, of course, once again, that Rocket are going to be in a very good position here to take this dragon for themselves. But Ooh. Andy are in a lot of trouble. Nine of five does not get the burst, and but that's got to be Drake conceded. That does mean there is a table out of the fight. That's got to be Drake conceded here. I mean, you can't contest that, and Ashley might be caught that as well. They, they just rotate this yep. into Drake, and then and then all of a sudden you soul point, and and as team Tan, you have to be able to fight them on the next one because Infernal Soul is just gonna run through your squishy con. It's, it's, it's the it worst really case is. scenario. It truly is. And right now, it's just looking too difficult for them because they have been playing around that top side so much. But look at the CS differential. He's not even smart in the I mean, I shouldn't even say it's differential. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. But I mean, he doesn't have to get smoke. There is no pressure at all. You know, maybe it could be a Luxor, but they... And perhaps they know that Lux is in the top side right now, so even that, they are not scared of at all. The Glacial Fisher goes wide. Looks like uh, Zim Rocket were looking for some sort of engage. They are all in the mid side of the map, but I think perhaps backing oh, is a better option for Jesus them. But as Christ. I say so, Rampage for 905. This guy is unstoppable, not only in the last game, but in this game as well. Yeah, you banned this Lissandra, but you forgot to take the LeBlanc out of the matchup. I mean, first game he did, but this time it's oh. just so bad. Good stun coming out there, though, from ha uh, Mars. But look at that. There's just no damage. Harry now going Ooh. in. Oh, can he fight 9 to 5? That's the flash. Perfect execution goes on the wrong target. Unfortunately, the Blank will be able to get it. But that's the stun on Bugly. But even him, they just cannot find them. They are just too far behind Gizmo. He has exhaust Harry as well. Harry wants to look for something. There block. comes the Caitlyn oh. also. It's going to be a blocked by Wellesley. And Rocket are going to walk away unscathed. Why can't my ADCs do that? Hey, Why brother. can't they block for us? I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's just emotional trauma here. N nice ulti to clear the wave. Oh, but... that is a good ultimate indeed. But look at the damage. They still cannot kill Wellsy though. Zephyr now could be in trouble. Shaper I does not have the gap closer. Here comes the Orn Horn. <laughs> Goodbye, Grace. Unstoppable on the LeBlanc. And it is just falling apart for Team Tan. Yeah, and that's where the focus has gone to shut stop that Orn. And, and look, he still has his R button installed after all those ganks. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing really more to say to that, right? Now the mid lane turret is in trouble. That's a good um, ultimate to take it uh, the wave away. But even then, it is still right there. And it just feels like Team Town are completely on the back foot. And it begs the question, Gizmo, what do they need to do to try and get back into this game? They have to find some kind of magical pick. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, there's got to be some magic that's going to happen here. Like, I, I can't see a, a clear way in. It, it may be a burger flip on the bar, and that's, that's the only thing I can see. And if you're going to have to do it, you're going to have to do it fast. But even then, your comp doesn't do Baron that fast. So it's going to be a burger flip, and then they're going to be the other team's going to be there waiting, going, I haven't seen them for about a minute. Where are they? Oh, Baron. Okay, so it's going to be a very hard thing to get back into. Oh, speaking of burger as well, they could maybe find 9 or 5. That's a lot of damage coming in. That is a massive shutdown. Going over the Slinny, that could be one of the ways to go back into this game. As now Shaper has been called down. He has oh. to be in a lot of trouble here. That's another shutdown. This one going over to the Caitlyn. Could they trap here? They are going to find a trap. Harry doing some damage to Simon Ferocious. Team Tana finding a comeback into this game. The ultimate of Lux goes wide. But that is definitely something that can help them get back into this game. Yeah, but is it enough though? Are they going to be able to, to, to use this to get anything? I mean, they can get this mid tower, get that, get that uh, objective bounty, which will give them a bit more gold. But only it's... five seconds. I don't think they can. No, I, it feels hopeless. I mean, yes, they got something, but it's not enough to, to really say we're in, in a position now to, to, to take a team fight because you can't. 
Oh, Zephyr going aggressive here. Oh, yeah, I mean, he is quite oh. strong. The ultimate does not kill Wellsy, though. If only he had Collector, right? If only he had Collector, Gizmo. No, but yeah, very unfortunate uh, that he is not going to be able to find a shutdown here on Wellsy. That would have been really big for the Graves. And, well, they find some things, but the question is, can they find oh. more? Well, right now, they find a death. That is for sure. 905 is just rolling over Mars. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I'd like to, like to say it's 007, but, you know, it, it's 07 instead. Yep, <laughs> it's, it's worse, unfortunately, Gizmo. <laughs> if it was 007, at least they might have been able to find some sneaky spy stuff around, but nope, they are not finding anything. Mars is having a pretty rough game here, and Harry now has to be careful as well, because 905 and Shaper are on his butt. Yeah, they could be able to find him, he's got out a bit. Yeah, Harry, though, has the ultimate ready. The perfect execution to try and get out is a possibility, though. Harry might be looking for 9 of 5. That's a lot of damage coming in onto the LeBlanc. Can they find a kill, though? Shaper has used that ult to try and get out. That is a very, very nice jump in for 9 of 5 to try and get out. But Harry now, can he find a kill? At Ooh. least, no, it is Shaper turning it around. Shaper is so strong right now. The knock up on Slitty. Oh, it's a disaster. They cannot even find a Jin Xiao. It's a double kill. 14 rockets. Yeah, and, and I mean, uh, they gave him a bit of hope there by missing the, the, their whole combo, wasting it on the shroud of the Akali, and then all of a sudden, it almost looked like it was going to go in favor of Team 10, only for them just to get their, their CC back up. Oh, good flash there by Mars to get out, Brumbus, but like, yeah, how Brumbus worth is it? it? Yeah, they are going to find Brom, but look at this, they just don't have any damage at all. The Glacial Fisher is going to knock them up for now. Bullet Time doing half of the damage uh, of Zandia's HP, and... You know, they oh can go so God. deep. And well, speaking of going deep, that is a great exhaust by Sandia because that definitely made sure he survived. Uh, definitely. But but is he resetting in a greedy position here? I mean, if Brom just saw him there, just slightly off the thing, he could have just flashed Q with him and just one shot him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm certainly sure. The, well, the Guildfuss was up, right? So there was something to do. But look at this. It's that just... is just a soul. It's just right there. Once again, just like last game, they have to give up the soul with no fight to be had. And... Well, that means there is a lot of money, a lot of power on the side of Team Rocket right now to set themselves up for this Baron. Yeah, and now that that, that exhaust isn't going to save you because all of a sudden then you can have the the, the Infernal Soul pop as well, which is just going to boost you through. So I can't see how this Ketan going to survive in these fights. And it's going to be fully dependent on this Akali and Viego to, to get through these fights. It really is, and I guess we should take a little bit of a look at the items to see what we're going to be looking at in this next fight. As well, I say that. Well, Zito could be called out. That's a big root there from Mars. That's the way to find yourself a way back into the game. Flinny finds the shutdown, and perhaps they can turn a Baron for themselves. Maybe, but do you want to risk a Baron with a LeBlanc still up? I know that MF Sam, oh, he's just going for it. He's going for it. Well, I was going to say, Shaper is just going in. Shaper is not dying at all. That's a big damage from the Grace, but can they fight more? There comes the teleport. Bugley is going to be able to cancel out the ultimate of Caitlyn. They are not able to fight more just yet, though. 9 of 5 going back in is going to survive for now. Good place for Fisher, but there is no follow up for the side of Team Rocket. And also just farming. Finally finds something, but can they find more? 905 now, though, going back in. Harry taking some damage here. Bugly has been hit by the Shuriken, but they don't want to go in. And yeah, as you said, Orn is just pushing out. This is not looking good here for Rocket. 905. Everything goes wide. Has no jump ready. Slinny, can he find something? Harry is going in there. Gets exhausted, though, but can just wait it out. Perfect execution to get out. But Shaper once again. Going to be able to find that kill. Surely Akali not going to be able to get out here. Here comes the Ornhorn. Goes wide. Slinny in a lot of trouble. That's not a kill for Team Rocket. And surely, Gizmo, surely that is a Baron. Has to be a Baron. You just run straight there. There's no way that you're you're thinking otherwise in your mind. It should just be the freest Baron attempt of their life. It is awarded, but they don't have any... They actually don't have any uh, things to deal with it. But it should be completely free. Luxar could come through to steal it, but Zin's going to be there to, to smite it. So it should be fine. And yeah, that's just not believe this game completely out. I, I believe, do we believe in, in the final spark, is right? The 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 O the O eight steel. Oh, the, I the, do that. I, the sound of the objective oh. found being caught off guard there, but they're not going to be able to find it. In fact, they do find oh. a death. It is a kill for nine oh five. I that that caught me out of guard. I was like, there is no way this just happened, but it didn't unfortunately. And Team Rocket are looking in prime position to take this series. Okay. Sometimes the game just debates you like that. What can I say? Um, <laughs> I, I we saw it, it just switched straight to the Luxor and we couldn't see the Baron. And yeah. it was like, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Time to get that bounty noise in. Oh my God.
That was ridiculous. But it didn't happen, unfortunately. And right now, well, as I said, right, they are in a great position to take the game. Team Rocket have the Baron. They have the power. They have the Orn item on the LeBlanc. She is just going to one-shot everything that she sees in front of her. Gizmo, it, it's falling apart from Team Tan. And, of course, catches might be able to get you back into the game but you stressed it before is it enough to get a cash like that well especially not if you get caught nine of five though might be in a tiny bit of trouble harry has popped the ultimate there is the final execution the zonius is buying some time slinny though is already dead well he is going to be able to pick that one up and that is disaster for team time because harry is now at their back line and just has to run away and Ooh, back some lovely try and defend anything good ultimate there by mars but just so far behind it's an 0 and 9 locks with only a ludens that is just not going to cut it yeah i mean ludens does a lot of damage which you can get a couple items behind him but at this point you know you're talking the 26 minute item completion there it's not going to feel good especially considering the fact that the rest of the team like they're even building armor like for the majority of the time so and you can't one shot them it feels really bad as lex there so maybe we'll see a miracle pick but for the most part i'm just expecting Rockcat just to just to walk this one in, just slowly take take objectives, maybe misplay here and there, but look like they're taking a fight. Wow, look at the bullet time! It is a massive two kills, three kills being found over to Team Rocket, and they are rushing through the base. They are not looking only for the base, they are also looking for the ace, they are looking for the series. It is a very difficult defense to do here for Zephyr and Harry. Are they going to be able to do so? It's a lot of damage coming Whoa, out from Harry. the Grace. Harry's trying to buy some time. Can he find enough time though? Boogly is very low, but that is not the target that you want. That is unstoppable on the LeBlanc. Zephyr is the only one left alive, but not for long. That will be the end. The game is over. The best of three is won by Rocket in a very strong fashion. Yeah, insane. 27 to 6. 10k gold lead. I mean, it's just, it, it, it was just start to finish, just raw cat, really, wouldn't it? It really was. Yeah, just a brilliant, brilliant performance here from Rocket Tan. Unfortunately, unable to start off the season strong after a very strong last season. But right now, Rocket, they just look like the better team. But your cam gone. Uh, <laughs> Is mean, it gone? Oh, it's, it's there. Miracle. Miracle. Oh, oh we're good. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, a complete and utterly in, in, insane game there. I mean, I feel like we have to stress that they've got another game tomorrow and they have to mentally recover after this one, after this this quite fast 2-0 against them. They yeah. have to recover and come back out tomorrow to play. Uh, I actually don't know who they're playing, but th they've got to play anyway. And it's another best of three and they have to be able to come out with something better than what we saw today because I'm telling you, I don't like the Caitlyn Lux lane. It didn't feel right. They got punished a lot earlier and... Just because of the Lux not having Flash, the lane started to go go behind faster and faster. And it just gets picked off one by one. And, and the LeBlanc was just everywhere. I mean, I don't know how that hard to stress that the comp, the comp just, just wasn't there. And the pressure wasn't at the right places for them. I certainly think there's going to be a lot that uh, that they have to talk about uh, after these two games. Because there was there were glimmers of hope, right? Like, even in this game, there were some catches that brought them potentially back into the game but it just wasn't enough at that point but i feel like especially last game is something that they can take a lot from because you know i do feel like that jinx ban eventually didn't turn out to do much right because like if you're going to be playing such an aggressive bot lane you might as well do it against the jinx and rather take away the brom to make sure that doesn't happen but we also have to put you know props to team rocket here they looked incredibly strong in the first game especially in the early to mid game they have been absolutely dominant and we have to talk about Shaper as well, because he he was basically farming four jungles this game, Gizmo. Yeah, he, he, he was just invading non-stop and, and, and like just being a nuisance, really. And yeah. th they pretty much just did what Tan, Tan normally do, where they just take the mid-jungle mid pressure and just take it into the enemy jungler. But they did it against Tan, who, as I said previously, last time, were in the finals trying to do that again. And that's what got them to that final. So... It's a bit upsetting that they they got they got their their card played against them. Maybe a bit of Una reverse card used there, but it felt a bit hard because Slinny didn't really have a chance to to play in the game and then had to force to go to the wrong lanes in in this last game, having to go up to this top side to to farm on on the Orn because of how badly the Kitten Lux lane did end up going, which is which is where he had the path originally, so it, it felt like. It felt like he he was like sort of put on a, on a bad side by his team, you know. Slinny was just a bit a, a bit like. A bit left out of it, really. 
Yeah. Well, there's there's two tiny things that I actually want to mention before uh, we are going to call it for the night. Uh, one of the things is, most importantly, right, uh, Team Tan, tomorrow they have their next match, as you said. What is the biggest difference that we need to see from them, Gizmo? Because we've seen them play today. We've seen that they, you know, when it comes to the late game, they are able to bring back games, but their early game has just been looking off. Is it the draft? Is it just the gameplay? What do they need to try and change to get a better start tomorrow? Uh, I think I'd like to see some, some more uh, chemistry in, in, in the bot lane, really. I mean, I, it, there was a few plays in the first game where they were engaging on the wrong targets, like the... Uh, the Elsa went on the support, uh, the the MF and the Jonda went on to the ADC. Stuff like that shouldn't be happening when you're trying, trying to play at this point in a competitive level, right? When you've been playing together this long. These calls need to be said in voice comms, right? And then even in this game, you know, we're seeing positioning in incorrectly. We're seeing, seeing like, someone going for, for, like, poke and the other person staying too far back. So then it allows them to uh, approach upon that person and, uh, and then fight them. So... I feel like we need to see them, you know, mingle a bit better. Maybe, maybe take some picks that are a bit more forgiving. I mean, even in the first game, they had they had the lead really. They had they had the shutdown on yeah. on, on the MF, and it was just it was just an over aggressive play by the Alsa that then let the MF to then get the, to get killed by the Jinx to give the shutdown over, which was a massive shutdown. I add that then snowballed her back into the game. I mean, a Jinx is never out of a game, but it it fastened that that snowball, and then all of a sudden. You know, we're talking like 10 minutes later where we're going, well, what can they do? Well, not give that kill over would have been the only only solution, really. Yeah. And, well, unfortunately, once you have given a kill over like that, there's no turning it back. There is no, uh, you know, echoing that all the way back. So, unfortunately, that was the way this game played out. And then the last thing I do want to touch on, Gizmo, is uh, I do always like to talk about a player of the series for me, right? Because... Uh, we're going to have to choose one from Ro Team Rocket here. Um, I think to me personally, um, it's it's actually hard to say. I feel like all of the members played incredibly well. Uh, but speaking of well, to me, it has to be Wellsy. I feel like the consistency on the ADC play has been phenomenal in this series. And I feel like, to me, uh, Wellsy was definitely the one who played the strongest in this series. Yeah, I think I think his aggression in the bot lane, uh, along with uh, Bugsy and... Uh... On that brawn was insane early yep. game, right? They 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 pretty much ran that early game completely destroyed uh, Team Tan's win condition. But I gotta say, I think my my player is is nine oh five, right? Because he he found those yep. picks. He he especially on the blunt, he just found those picks, one shot people. He pushed Harry out of lane pretty well. Uh, had a good CSD. But even in the first game, there was four bands towards him, right? He picked the yep. he picked the Ari and still popped off and able to find the right charms right placements maybe a bit too aggressive with some of the owls but for the most part he was there he was able to move around the map okay and that's what i like to see as far as uh a player on, on team tan that I, I think i think was a a shining shining light was i think zephyr played a pretty good game yeah uh, especially in the first one he his um his fuel really came back into the game uh, i know how he had the big play where they were able to get that shut down on the jinx but for the most part it was just zephyr just just finding and recovering in that top lane uh, maybe a few few itemization changes would have helped him win harder, but for the most part, he was able to stay on that side lane and actually do something. Uh, is there someone you you, you see on uh, Tan that you? I think I'd have to fully agree, right? Because I do feel uh, like all of them had their moments where they played very well. Like for example, even Slinny in this game find some really really good picks to try and get themselves back, but. I think over, overall, it has to be Zephyr in the top lane, yeah, because I feel like Zephyr, of all the, um, the members of Team Tan, was the most consistent in this series, and it does show that he's ready, definitely, um, to be stronger tomorrow, because that is definitely when it has to matter. We will be back on Esports Wills, of course. Uh, rather, Esports Wills will be back <laughs> tomorrow with another game here for Team Tan. But for now, we are going to call it for the night. That is going to be it from me. Of course, Mr. Gizmo as well. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you guys all have a great night. And don't go anywhere because tomorrow is back for more League of Legends. Have a good one, guys. Peace.